Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4 Millennium Dawn Modern Day Mod here today on the channel. We're going to be starting a brand new series as Japan. We're going to be going full imperialistic. We're going to try and bring back the Empire of the Rising Sun. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. We're also running a Japan sub mod with a unique national focus tree which uh, is going to be a lot of fun in this series we want to try and occupy korea china indonesia and we might even get as far as australia as well so as we load on in bonsai let's go all right just need to turn that off and then we are good to go we're starting in the 2000 date it is the first of january we are liberal coalition with a western outlook Unfortunately, the Japanese the co economy isn't the greatest, so we will definitely need to reinvigorate it. Thankfully, not too corrupt, so we need to reduce that. So, we're going to be going nationalistic. We're going to be going down one of these. Now, I could bring in the JSDF, the Japanese Self-Defense Force. I think that's what I want to do, rather than bring back the monarchy itself. Maybe just sort of have them as a figurehead. But check this out. Here is the Japanese focus tree. Absolutely crazy. Where well, we can rebuild Japan's military and civic infrastructure. We can change some of the governmental reform. We can inform ag agrarian reforms as well. Kind of insane. And then, of course, there's a fair few paths where we can go down. But yeah, we want to go full nationalistic in this series so i think we'll go with the trinity reform we'll keep shinto as our religion unfortunately we're in a massive recession and geez it's going to cost us 600 political power to change that and the corruption as well i think that's realistic because japan has had multiple recessions and polit and um economical stagnation so i want to try and fix that we also want to try and conquer and take new lands because <laughs> the uh aging crisis is crippling japan and we want to secure japan's future and make them great again okay so we're currently losing five billion at the moment we have a huge deficit of three trillion which is quite a bit also our population tax isn't that high which is surprising i actually might put up the corporate and the population a bit because compared to my turkish and australian campaign it wasn't even that low Okay, so local security. Now, we do have in our constitution that we can't really go on any foreign wars or even have that crazy of an army. So we do want to try and repeal all pacifism within the government, the parliament, so we can start conquering territory. Okay, I'm going to spend a little bit of my GDP to get an increased buff to civilian construction. So we've got the national consciousness here as well. Protectionism and revisionism. I think we'll go down mostly revisionism. And we don't need to recognize anyone just yet. We already have a Japanese CIA, essentially. Um, I don't know if we're going to need to do too much stuff. We might need some counterinsurgency stuff. Maybe to deal with any political plots or, you know. Anyway. Um, oh, so we've got not the best rifle. The Hawa. But we do have a unique model playing as Japan, which looks sick. I would like to try and change the country flag as well. I think that'd be quite cool. I do think that nationalistic flag actually looks better than what they've got now. I guess they had to change it, I suppose, after WW2, but I don't know. I think it looks cool. Like, you know, the red stripes, the infamous one? Like, in Man of the High Castle, you see it so often in that show. I think it looks better. Obviously without the uh, Imperial conquering fascist connotations it's got with it. But uh, yeah, it looks like a cool flag <laughs> apart from that. <laughs> Alright, so let's uh, go down our research, construction and whatnot. Diplomacy wise, uh, okay, Republic of China actually likes us the most, followed by Indonesia, Singapore, and Thailand. Yeah, more like <laughs> more, all the factions are probably going to be uh, conquering, okay. We do have a bunch of steel, which is interesting. 
Yeah, there was that whole thing that in World War Two, a couple of years before the war, um, Australia sold a bunch of its steel to Japan and then was used against it a couple of years later, which was uh, not the best sort of piece of um, uh, global geopolitics and diplomacy, I guess. Like, fuck me. But it's interesting that now they've uh, secured that steel reserve. A lot of it, they get imported from Australia, I suppose. Okay, so let's go with a bunch of military factories, um, officers to get um, the money in, and civilian as well. So, we're actually quite a built-up country compared to Turkey. Man, that Turkey campaign was rough. <laughs> because the economic situation is... Uh, quite frankly dog shit <laughs> and it was like realistic in that so we really struggled to uh, form the Ottoman Empire hopefully this time around it's a little bit easier 70 factories we start off with 100k in our manpower as well but let me know in the comments we love to expand and conquer I think going after Korea maybe Taiwan China just sort of in our vicinity we might need to go after Indonesia maybe a couple of the island nations before China Okay, so I just want to quickly clear the military industry production queue so I can make sure I'm efficiently getting at least one of everything that we need. And we'll go with fighter jets as well. We're going to need a superb navy if we are to dominate the seas in East Asia. Need a phenomenal air force as well. But we'll try and take territory ourselves, like, under our control. But I also wouldn't mind puppeting or maybe allying with some factions here and there as well. So we still have very limited equipment. Most of our tanks and trucks are from the... 80s and 90s, I think. Our naval apparatus seems to be actually a lot stronger. Okay, so as long as we've got a frigate, a destroyer, a couple tax subs, I think we're looking good. Our logistics is actually on point. We will need to get better quality officer cores, and we will have um, nuclear reactors as well. I would imagine, because, oh yeah, a couple of these disasters haven't happened to you. I wonder if that happens in this game. Like, will we have to deal with the, the amount of, what does Japan have? Typhoons? Yeah, typhoons, earthquakes, um, natural disasters. Anyway, we got 15 divisions, 154 battalions, which isn't too bad. Three motorized, one tank division, and one 12th helicopter brigade. Let's move you north to northern Kyushu. And the US have a naval base in Okinawa, which is interesting. But there does seem to have a foreign claim there. I wonder if there's any nations in Japan that we can sort of liberate. Because there are sort of ethnic differences in Japan, mostly down in Okinawa and in Hokkaido, up in the north in Sapporo. Okay, so we've got a pretty decent air force as well, so let's try and merge that up slightly. And I think we're good. Let's unpause and slowly but surely change the government and bring Japan back onto the world stage. So we've got 75 ships as well. That's really significant. Let's sort by total skill. I think that's what I want to do rather than just the overall command. Massive navy, actually. And let's group up these air wings more efficiently as well. And then we'll divide them throughout the mainland of Japan. But it's going to take a little bit of a while to build up as we are massively in debt, unfortunately. We might, we might need to bring Arbenomics uh, early in, I suppose. If we are to get our financial districts and debt on point. But yeah. 
Feel free, as always, to let me know feedback and suggestions, tips and tricks for this series. I'm back into the swing of Hearts of Iron 4, and I'm still thoroughly enjoying it on this brand new YouTube channel. Oh, we've got a pretty decent um, military command there as well. So there's a couple ways how we can get the nationalists involved. We could do a civil war. We could go to a vote. We'll see how we go. Just looking at our logistics there as well. Seems to be on point. Our railway network. Of course, we've got the bullet trains. <laughs> We're slowly but surely waiting for the Trinity reform to come in, but we've got a bunch of negative national spirits as well, which we would like to clear up. Now, we are using a little bit of our GDP for additional expenditures. We are hemorrhaging cash as well. We do, we do, we do seem to have a rather large war chest, though, but the debt is uh, absurd, I'm afraid. We probably should move some of these agents into active duty. So, let's send one to Beijing. And... If we get another one, we might send it out as well. Okay, 15 divisions would like to grow that, of course. Yeah, now I was talking about this before. Yeah, we do have one foreign claimant, so we can release the people of Okinawa if we wanted to, to become a free and independent republic. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, we can't do that in the north. Um, I don't know about this, whatever. So, let's do a nationalist propaganda campaign to try and grow their influence in Japan. We're going to need them to grow to at least about 20-25%. So a significant amount. Mostly at the moment it is Western pro-democratic and emerging outlook. We're our consumption economy. We want to try and get that up a bit. So really hemorrhaging cash at the moment. But it's mostly because we are firmly in a recession slash stagnation. So that's something we have to keep an eye on. There will be an election as well. So we're in stagnation at the moment. We want to try and get that to stable growth. Dude, I don't know if we save up political power for that, or what do we do? Or just wait for the RNG to... RNG events to come up. So now, what do I want to go down here? So this is more governmental reform. So we might be better off going down that once we bring in the nationalists or the army. We can't go down this either, just yet. Um, so, we need total education. So, I don't know what entails that to come in. Sometimes it's just time and events. But this is my first time playing as Japan on the Millennium Dawn mod and sub mod. So, we'll just sort of have to play it by here, here, and there. Look, we might not be able to min-max and get the optimal, efficiently way to conquer all of former Imperial Japan's territories, but we'll do it in our own way, eventually. <laughs> I haven't failed a Hearts of Iron 4 campaign, but sometimes you just don't know when you're playing these sub-mods for the first time what's the best way to go down them. You just sort of got to play it by here. Okay, so there doesn't seem to be anything in the focus tree that I can bypass this. It must be an event. No, it doesn't seem to be there. But it's such a huge focus tree. There's a lot of stuff you can go down, which is really quite cool. You can become closer to America and stuff. So here is the reforms and stuff that we eventually want to go down. And these are the war decks. Okay. Well, that's not going to overly matter crazily if we do flip to nationalism and go neo-imperialism. Because then we're going to be able to justify on people whenever we want. So, we'll go with new threat. We might even help out the Americans as well. I think we should not anger them 
nor piss them off, really. They seem to be giving us access to their satellite intelligence, which is good. But yeah, I think once their war on T kicks off, and they try to do enduring freedom and Operation Freedom and stuff, I think we'll help them out in the Middle East and stuff. Will give us valuable experience. Oh, I've actually got a new Prime Minister. Mori. Okay. He didn't last too long. <laughs> Our previous guy. Uh, what else can we go with here? Nothing really. Oh, dude, our political power is terrible. Minus 300. Okay, so he's done a political gaffe. So we kind of want the nationalists to grow. So we want to try and bring down the liberals and the traditionalists. Okay, so that's been complete. And... We want to increase... Radicalism, I think. That's what I want to do. Okay. So, we can't go down any of this just yet. Except for this one. So, we might as well do that one. There seems to be some economic reform down there. We're putting in the hard yards. Hopefully, we'll try to get a war here today. But, unfortunately, the Japanese economy and political system is quite... Stiff and gridlocked at the moment. So, we'll eventually get to a point where we're rapidly expanding and conquering. But to have a successful conquering mid to late game, you've got to put in the hard yards and the work early on to build a solid foundation brick by brick. And that will really set you up for success in the... Uh, Hoi for late game. Just takes a little while sometimes. Dude, our political power is so minus. What? Oh, looks like we might even have an election here. Okay. Ah, oh, why did that do that? Hang on, there must be... Oh, that's what I didn't do. I didn't set... The Navy to... Meet with the main fleet. I would highly recommend that, by the way. It makes things so much easier. I usually only like to have one huge fleet. Only if I'm playing as the US do I have a sort of West Coast and East Coast fleet. Anyway, we'll refrain from attacking anyone because we want the uh, army to grow in influence. I kind of like role-playing as the army in uh, series. I think that's kind of cool. I think we'll make the... I think we'll do it this time again. Okay, so it looks like we might have another Prime Minister, unfortunately. Oh god, we've been through three. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, so we've missed the election there. I wonder if we could have... If we're a little bit more on point. Could we have flipped over in this first election? It's no matter. Because for time's sake, we can still have a civil war, essentially. But it's just a little bit annoying. Alright, we've got this uh, secondary spy here. Where do we send it to? Can we send it to Australia? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> just for uh, the uh, shits and gigs. Fuck it. That'd be funny. No. We don't want to form a coalition with them. If we can destabilize the ruling government, that would be uh, ideal. But the political power not having it is really hurting us. So we can't go down this just yet. I think we want to go down the right side of this tech tree. This will allow us to increase our output slightly. And we can probably pay off some of this debt as well. Now that we're making 9 billion. 
Oh, the 2000 Typhoon. Oh, we can lower their reliability rating. Okay, so... No, I definitely don't want to help them out in this Typhoon Flood. Holy shit. Because, first of all, it costs money. But it also will drop the stability of the ruling party and their influence. Once we get the party we want in charge of Japan... We'll obviously need to rebuild and spend some of that money. But, dude, if that's a common occurrence... With this... National Focus Tree. Sometimes the factions in Hoi Fork and, and countries can just get really, really... Hamstrung by national disasters and real-life debt. Dude, there's been an earthquake as well. <laughs> Shit. It's not that much. It's only a billion to repair, but... If it can chip away at the strength of the coalition party, we uh, the better. All right, we're still a little bit of while away before we can launch a full-on military coup. Okay, so we can do it now if we want. Now, what I'll do. It's a little bit of an exploit, a little bit cheaty and cheeky, but I'm going to do it. So, if you do want to have a civil war to flip your government quickly, what you do is you completely disband the army. So then, the enemy Japanese faction won't spawn with any. And then what you do is you... I should have queued up more. Why can't I... I own this territory. Why can't I put that there? Okay, that's annoying. I'm going to have to put it here. Now, usually you're quicker to deploy and get boots on the ground quicker if I queued it up efficiently, but that's okay. We'll get some in. Now, you will have to spend a couple years reforming, but it'll be far quicker doing this than waiting the four years for the vote. I didn't do it in the Australian campaign, nor the Turkish series, but... Because Japan is so built up and the army is so big, I didn't really want to have a long protracted war. There we go. And then we just need to take those pieces of territory quickly. Get our fighter pilots over the top, just in case they do get some units in. We might be able to get some Small experience with our pilots. We've got half the navy as well. We should be able to get more. But even with the um, Australian campaign, maybe I was potentially better to do this. Because some of those fights in the outback were long, arduous, and difficult. To say the least, it did turn into guerrilla warfare slightly. So we do want to try and be as quick as possible here. And rapidly take this territory so we can capitulate them but you do lose the experience on the units however it's not that doom and gloom because you do still have the equipment that just gets put back in the shore and we've won easy as that perfect there was a port strike though and general Fujiwara I think I said his name is now in charge of Japan. So, hopefully we can stabilize the country now. We're at stable growth, fittingly. And we'll go neo-imperialism. We probably don't need to install a draft, probably. We'll continue to reduce that large, bloated national debt. We will need to repair Japan slightly. And I'd rather repair the buildings in our country for constructing new ones. And the JSDF, the Japanese Self-Defense Force, is now in charge. Nice. And we only used about 40% of our total fuel as well. And this has been split up for some reason, so that should regroup. And thankfully, we didn't lose any 
Japanese lives either. However, now we are a little bit susceptible and prone to attack, so if you do do this, be warned that now you're weak overall. And let's have a look at the Navy now. So I think we might have technically lost some ships. But that's okay. And let's redo this again. So let's send it back here. And as you can see, we do have the logistics here. It's just going to take time to redeploy them. Because if I started the civil war with our armies intact, it would have split the 15 in half, roughly. And Japan is quite a hard country to fight over. There's a lot of choke points. Obviously, it's just a cluster of islands and river crossings which is essentially what they are or sea crossings are really really hard to battle in and around with so I think that's definitely the play playing as Japan but now the army's in charge oh god damn it our uh, Japanese agent was caught in Beijing shit okay so these now properly together why do they move back hang on there we go Can I... Okay, I think it's good now. Do we have to do this again? Yeah, hang on. No, I think we're good. I thought it was moving, deploying them somewhere else again. But it's all good. Okay, so we can probably up the military spend. Because we're making 16 billion now. As we're reducing our national debt. That will stop our... Tax on the GDP. We have 76. Good. So we're back up to probably what we had anyway. Mostly destroyers. A bunch of frigates. Corvettes and some submarines. We've got a real juicy navy, boys. Yeah, so this will give us a lot of military output, economic reform. Any of this other stuff. I think we can leave. So we can't even go with that. But we'll probably eventually want to go there. Okay, let's uh, install a technical training program. And seeing as we have the political power as well and the extra income in surplus, we're still making 11 billion. We can up the welfare, health care, and education capacity in Japan. Let's bring back the spirit of the warrior. And if I change the flag, if I click on that, will it actually change it? Oh. I hope it, I was kind of hoping that it was um, the Empire of the Rising Sun flag. Like the Japanese Imperial flag. Damn it. Ah, oh, it didn't work. It's just the default one. Oh, that sucks. Okay, so now that there's been another earthquake in 2001, we're going to spend the 1 billion in repairs, which isn't anything too crazy, because now we want to leave the JSDF, the army in charge. Okay, let's continue down with engineering. Maybe even focusing on population increase, because... We're going to struggle until we start coring and conquering other nations. Because the population in Japan, their decline is uh, kind of crazy. So, we've got a bunch of new units coming eventually. Yeah, so the United States is 33% influence. That's probably the highest that I've seen. Compared to the Australian, the German, and Turkish campaign. So we want to try and reduce that because the last thing we want is for phases to happen where we switch back to pro-Western outlook. So we're probably going to have to uh, attack any pro-outlook Western influence within our country. And 
Out of the national consciousness. Yeah, I think I think we move away from protectivism. I think that's what we want to avoid, which is already quite high at 62%. We want to try and flip it the other way around, I think. Uh, we won't recognize anyone just yet. Because I just don't think we need to. Oh, now we can go down this if we want. But it also wouldn't be a bad idea to maybe try diversify a bit. Here today, hopefully, we can have our first foreign war and uh, take some territory. So, hopefully, we can have that here today. The JSDF, the Japanese Self Defense Force, currently in charge. The Army's in charge after a coup d'etat in the last episode. Okay, so we can now go with uh, regional interventionalism. We eventually want to go to neo-imperialism. Eventually. Highly recommend it. And we should be able to do it soon now, actually. Nice. That's what we're focusing our political power on at the moment. Our economy is a little bit shocking. But hopefully we can rebuild it. Alright, so looking at the world map, Bill Clinton's in charge. Oh, they're actually Western Outlook. The Ruskies. Oh, wow, that's interesting. And everyone else is Western as well. NATO is still pretty strong along with CSTO. And the conflicts in the Middle East still haven't kicked off really just yet. So... We are obviously going with alternative historical focuses, so I'm curious to see how things go out. Oh, okay, it does look like the Northern Alliance is battling it out. Yeah, if the US call us in uh, any of these wars, I'm definitely going to help out. But overall, we start off with pretty good research and construction. It's really other stuff that we lack in. Military factories, offices... And fuel silos is what we're currently constructing. So, it's probably not a bad idea now to get a better quality rifle. Because then the next one's in 2005. Because we will need decent small arms. So, our army's incredibly small at the moment. As we had to deal with a civil war in the last episode, of course. But now we have enough PP, little political power to go with neo-imperialism so we should be able to start justifying a war on Korea now we better have to go against one of these instead we eventually want to conquer all this I'm just trying to see what's more optimal for us I think going after South Korea is probably the play Okay, we're currently improving our naval doctrine. Oh, here we go. Japanese Coast Guard fought off an unidentifiable um, ship. Okay, so we can ask China to accept the salvage. Don't make another wave. I wouldn't... Hmm. Maybe we should ignore them, because we're eventually going to get a war with China. It's only a matter of time. But the longer we wait, the better. The stronger we are. We might be able to... Get some sort of guarantee with the US. Because at the end of the day... The US is guaranteeing Japan. So if we ever have a defensive war... We will be able to call them in. However, they are... Guaranteeing South Korea, so... That... Might not be a good idea. Like, the toys might get thrown out of the pram if we um, attack them and they're still guaranteeing them. But we'll see how we go. Alright, can't really change anything else just yet. Uh, we definitely want to move away from protectionism. Because it's 61%, that's quite high. So we do want to try and shift the national consciousness as well. But... The army's still firmly in charge. We've got a bunch of fresh new recruits finally have hit the ground. And it's going to be a little while before we can get some more. Nice. 
Oh shit, one of our agents has been captured. <laughs> As we can switch things to fast growth now. Oh, total start of the education. Oh nice, I've been waiting for that event to pop up. I wasn't too sure if there was something I could have done in the last episode. I'm hemorrhaging a little bit of cash at the moment. But it looks like the economy is taking a nice upward turn in 2002. So why can't we go down this just yet, for whatever reason. Anyway, let's go down this, and... Not really much else we can do. Haven't got any... Essentially, House of Representatives, or... Japan's equivalent of a Congress or anything to do either. But, so far, we're doing okay. Uh, we probably couldn't get some... Commanders in as well. We just need that little bit of extra political power. As everything adds up to an eventual war. So if we do go to war with the North, China's guaranteeing them. Or the states are guaranteeing the South. Yeah, I think I think we make a plan for South Korea. So it's going to take 265 days. Let's justify. And January 2003 is Invasion Day. Now, we will need to set up our drills. So, let's split up the Air Force slightly, so everyone's efficiently doing their role. We're going to set up multiple naval invasions as well. And I reckon our Navy should be able to... ...outbeat them. But first war of the series, we're going deep into South Korea. We're, we're going to have to keep an eye on the DMZ because looking at the peninsula, you would imagine the south of the island is very susceptible to Japanese invasion, while the north, if we sort of land on the DMZ, there's probably a bunch of fort walls and stuff up there. But there's only a limited amount of points. So, let's set one invasion point there from Kyushu. And let's set the secondary one here as well. Now, I do believe you do get a slight disadvantage of letting them know where you're going to land. So, they will have some units probably stopping us. But if we can do enough naval invasions, it could, it should confuse them as to where we're exactly landing. We could even do a third or a fourth. But if we make the plans and preparations now for the naval invasion and, and amphibious attack, we're going to be able to instantly do it once we declare war upon them. We're also going to be able to get a better quality homemade Japanese rifle as well. And let's bring that in. The Hawa. Looks kind of cool. I don't really know much about Japanese rifles. Okay, so let's go with a mixed economy. And we eventually want to get it up to... ...export as well. And we're nearly out of our construction, which is brilliant. We'll switch back over to military, because at the moment... We probably need to increase our fuel um, silo capacity. We're going to be able to bring in a crazy amount of oil from the Middle East if we want. But to be fair, the Ruskies are really quite close to us in the north, so we can even rely on them if we're going away from NATO, going on our own path. I haven't decided what I want to do as a faction. If I can, we will. If we can make sort of a similar thing to... Um, the Australian campaign where I formed the Southeast Asian Defense Force. That'd be kind of cool. Like a Japan first thing. I don't know. It is a little bit hard to form factions in the Millennium Dawn mod. It's just like a little bit of luck sometimes. But anyway, the Battle for Korea hopefully will begin soon. Okay, perfect. Now we're finally at... 
globalized trade economy. So we're going to have to keep an eye on our trade resources. However, we've got a bunch of civilian factories, so we're actually in one of the best places to go full globalized trade like this early on. Now, for now, we're getting most of our resources from China. You are better off to try and get them as closer to your lands as possible. But obviously, if we go after the north, it's going to, well, definitely complicate things. Yeah, so the US never even asked us to help on in, which I would have liked to do. Okay, so some sort of defense force legislation got pushed for you, pushed through. I don't know what that actually entails. And now I just want to have miter buffs to infantry units once they get um, activated. What, what, what? Oh, okay. So it actually spawned a unit in Tokyo. That was kind of cool. Well, let's move it down there. Now, we're currently a volunteer force. We could go with partial draft, but I don't think we actually need to. Because we've got 3 million manpower. You only need about a million in Millennium Dawn. Like, it's nearly too much. So, I think what we'll do is we'll ban the women from enlisting. And that will give us a construction benefit. And also help the population as well. Oh, God. China is uh, demanding the islands here. We're going to decline that. Because that might give us a justification against them. It's nearly about to be done, isn't it? They still got their bases there. And they still seem to be guaranteeing them. Oh, we could be at war with the US. That's a risk I'm willing to take. But it's done. I think we're ready to go. Let's declare war upon South Korea, Japan, and Korea are once again at, firmly at war. Oh, shit. Here we go. Now, it's quite a densely packed country, so this is going to be a difficult one. Hopefully, we can be successful here today, or we're going to be set back in the campaign. This is sort of a flashpoint. If we can't be incredibly successful quickly, we might have a hard time. So we've got three naval invasions going. Okay, so we've managed to take this small island just south of Korea. Just want to slow things down as the rest go in. So we'll try and rapidly gain territory there. We do have air supremacy over the top and we will have naval. But it does look like instantly our amphibious attack has found some resistance on the west coast. But hang on, we've managed to get a beachhead here on the east coast. So let's rapidly send the rest of the freshly recruited Japanese army on in and things are really hot hotting up there's been a flyby there but no ships or planes have taken casualties but we're currently fighting on the peninsula itself and they're trying to throw us back it does look like the Koreans have managed to scramble some jets and get back air supremacy at least tied but here we go Make sure the battle plans are drawn. We've got the fuel. Maybe we need to switch to strike force and start hitting their ports, hitting anything that comes near us. Because they will have a sizable navy. Because both Korea and Japan... Oh, we actually managed to make our way on in. Make our way on in. Nice. Well, how about we might try and go for Seoul? Okay, nice. Dude, Seoul is so close to the DMC. Holy shit. But yeah, anyway, Japan and Korea are constantly dealing with, like, unidentified North Korean ships and shit. So we're probably used to fighting in these seas to some extent. It's actually kind of crazy. The Korean Navy. Like, <laughs> how quite often they're in uh, some sort of semi-active service. Okay, so we've managed to take some tiles here. We've lost 7k to there too, which is significant. But oh, we've been cut off here trying to take their capital. But we were struggling in the south more, but we've managed to cross on over. Our army's in, but we do have low supply. 
We are slowly but surely taking territory. They're about 30% of capitulation. Oh, we've lost the port there, which is... Shit, I might have accidentally stuffed up here. Oh, I threw in the north. We are pushing down here in the south. The more territory we can get, the better. Particularly ports. But they do seem to be holding our rapid advance at the moment. Come on. No, 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 no. I want to try and connect the entire south if we can. Shit. I might try and redraw this. Fuck, hang on. Right, let's, let's redo this. Because we're in a really good situation, but I could fuck this up if we're not careful. So let's redraw this. Dude, they're just so densely packed. That's the thing about attacking countries like Japan and Korea and Indonesia and stuff. They're so densely packed. And once units bed in and get in, it's very hard for them to move out. And now those amphibious attacks have been stopped. We probably can move away from this. Oh, God. Unfortunately, the Korean Navy is going to town here on some of my convoys. They've managed to sink an abundance of them. We also can get a better quality rifle now as well. It's probably better to get that in. And let's set that there now and put it all on. Rapid, aggressively, advance. Nice. We've got air supremacy over the top firmly. We are winning here and there, but we are losing. Luckily, we've got 3 million manpower, so we really can keep some. Oh, we've got a lot to expend, so it's about 7k, 7k. Ah, oh, they're going to retake that eastern push, uh, the western push we had. Now we're mostly in the east. Damn, the stock market is booming. Well, that's nice. At least the economy's going good. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little bit of RNG with the economy. Dude, Japan can be quite a hard campaign. <laughs> like, you can hit with fucking typhoons, fucking earthquakes. We haven't even had any of the nuclear explosions yet. And the economy ain't the best. <laughs> but once we start conquering and taking territory, we shouldn't need to worry about our own military factories can do. They are really targeting my convoys. I guess there's convoy riding. We're on strike force, so we should be able to try and hit anything. So, even though we've given up... Yeah, unfortunately our units just got crushed there. Oh, it's ballooned to 19k. Uh, the US has declared war upon Iraq. Interesting. We're focusing on the peninsula, firstly. We're not going to have time to help them out in Iraq, but now, essentially, we've divided South Korea in half by east by west. We are pushing in some areas, but we're losing in others. We do have air supremacy over the top. Hopefully our navy starts really crushing theirs. 22k to 11, so we have lost more. We have made a really nice push here in the south, though. But this is really, really close. More Japanese convoys have been sunk. Just got to be careful there if they push from that island in the south. I didn't even know that island existed off South Korea. As if they own that. It looks sick. Uh, another one of my agents has been captured, unfortunately. We do seem to be flanking incredibly well now, though. And now we're tied for casualties. 50k losses in the Japanese-Korean War again. Still got air supremacy over the top. We're currently about to run out of fuel, which is kind of shit. So we will need to import some. We're officially out of fuel, so who can we get them from? We can get a bunch from the Saudis. The only problem is, if we do get some from, like, Russia, they're probably going to sink them, because they've already been sinking a shit ton. We had a max fuel capacity of 2 million. It just It's just the time of it getting here. 
Okay, so you want to get to a point where you're importing more than what you're consuming. But you don't want to waste the civilian factories if you can avoid it. But now we're in an active hot war. We definitely need the fuel to fund our naval supremacy and air. We also are investing in our naval, air, and army doctrines. But in in instantly there, another 17 convoys have been crushed. We still seem to be advancing slowly but surely. Oh, now it's ballooned to 47k. Oh, nice. So we're really crushing some units. It's been another earthquake back on the home island, unfortunately. Dude, it might be beneficial for us to take foreign territory just to get away from these fucking earthquakes. Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, it looks like the US was successful and they've popped it at Iraq. Interesting. But... Dude, this Korean War is crazy. Oh, no, we're surrounding them there. Oh, dude, we're about to crush a bunch of units. Nice. Even though we lost 42k. Yeah, I don't know how you could do this with losing less. This could be, like, our highest losses of the future wars to come. Like, legitimately. Like, I, I reckon uh, North Korea will be able to put up much of a defense. Okay, so mostly Western outlook. And it looks like they've been brought into NATO. So the US is doing its Middle Eastern uh, nation building as always. And we're going with battalion support as well. Yeah, it's just this little island to the south. Oh, nice, we, we took it. Just the last final stretch here. 43k. Okay, so now it's nearly doubled. We're in a bit of a roll. Dude, it looked like our progression was... Stagnating a little bit. Oh, and our fuel's gone down. Are they targeting? Oh, God. I think the oil tankers that we're using on those convoys are struggling to get here. So we're going to have to negotiate with the Ruskies to get some oil. Because um, they're quite close to us. Because, like, Vlad of Vladstock is, like, super near to us. They should be able to send stuff from there. Because I think it's just that long stretch around. Yeah, like, we're trying to get, like, a hundred convoys of Saudi oil, but it just keeps on getting sunk. You gotta give it to the South Koreans. They're making us work for this one. Air supremacy, naval supremacy. Our army is what's really struggling. But hopefully with the combined, combined military-industrial complex power of South Korea and Japan... We should be able to dominate the rest of the countries in our vicinity. Another bunch of them sunk. Our fuel has gone down again. Ugh. Canada, maybe coming from the east coast of Japan. Like, hang on. We don't need to be constructing more rifles and shit. And vehicles and aircraft. We just need the oil to get this final push into Seoul. Okay. So, 2 million. What's that? What is that? Barrels? Liters? I guess it's barrels. Nice. They've capitulated. We need to increase that to about like 8 or 6. But anyway, South Korea has capitulated. So, we could pop at them. But because they're so close to us. I want to bring the peninsula under our direct control. Nice. And now we can really stop importing that oil. We need a repair. And we'll increase our silo capacity and maybe even some of our, our biofuel production as well. So we don't have to rely on uh, foreign oil here and there. Well, unfortunately guys, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching episode 2. Man, we had the successful, hard-fought battle for South Korea here today. Stay tuned for episode 3, coming out the exact same time tomorrow, where I guess we make plans and preparations to go against the North. We seem to have a bunch of divisions. I would imagine they're not well-trained. <laughs> they might be slightly well-equipped. They've probably got more missiles and vehicles rather than battle-hardened soldiers. But also... 
we've got to be careful because China's guaranteeing them as well. Or maybe we're better off to maybe naval invade the Philippines or declaring war upon North Korea and uniting the Korean Peninsula. Under Japanese control, not under Korean control. <laughs> but anyway, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. We're currently in July 2003. We've taken the South. Thankfully, we didn't get into a war with the States, who were guaranteeing them, but did back down. However, once we start making plans and preparations to just uh, justify against the North, China is... Uh, guaranteeing them so we might be at war with the Chinese here today or we're just going to be doing the North Korean operation so a lot of stuff to look forward to so the economy is now booming we nearly are fully on a total war economy we have 72 military factories we've managed to gain nearly a million in manpower thanks to the Koreans coming well on board we also want to upgrade the defense companies in Japan the Japanese Defense Force is currently in control, the army, and uh, things are looking good for Japan. Okay, let's do a slight tax cut there, and we've got a little bit of public discontent and instability. So we're going to buff up the local police force in Korea. Okay. Kuwait has... Uh, approved our proposal really they're gonna give us oil which is interesting okay so let's justify against them and we'll try and conquer them Tw uh, 240 days before that's complete because the Americans have managed to be successful in Iraq and Afghanistan so now I guess we're trading with the uh, Kuwaitis no uh, cool nice oh we've actually got a new faction leader for whatever reason, we've got a Japanese Grand Admiral. I guess the army's influence waned in the JSDF, the Japanese Self-Defense Force, and now the Admiral's now in charge, or he's retired. So at the moment, we need to restock our fuel silos. We have a capacity now of 4 million, which is fantastic. It was about 2 million before, early in the campaign, and we're going to try and get as much oil as we can. Uh, we'll try and get it from Canada, the United States, and Saudi Arabia, and from the Ruskies as well. And we're actually buffing up our capacity because there was a couple of stages here and there where we ran out of fuel in the Korean conflict. Oh, here we go. Chinese jets have been scrambled. Oh! Oh, we actually can get a war deck. They actually fired upon us. Oh, fuck. Although, I kind of want to stand up to them. I don't want to have a war against them just yet. I'm not ready. I'd rather go against them in Korea. Okay, the justification has been complete. There's a bunch of units on the border. And there's a potential enemy of them joining in. So here we go, boys. The battle between the Japanese and North Korea is about to begin. Now, compared to the South Koreans, our air force should be not roughly on par. But we should be able to smash theirs. Our... Navy as well. They're probably bringing out fucking boys on <laughs> fishing boats. And the army does have the numbers. But I don't think their divisions have the... Essentially the strength compared to ours. So we just need to split up some fighters. Now most of our air wings can operate from the mainland of Japan and fly on over. Now, we are gonna, it's going to be a little bit difficult pushing over the DMZ because it is very fortified. Oh, and they've called them in. Oh, shit. Ladies and gentlemen, the second, or is it third, <laughs> Sino-Japanese War, or Sino, is about to begin. Japan is now at war with China and North Korea. But so far, we've actually successfully pushed over the DMZ. But look how many divisions they are. Oh my god, hang on. This is a huge development. So the Republic of China, Taiwan, the government in Taipei, want us to join a faction. <laughs> the Chinese, the China encirclement faction. Oh, dude, and they've already made a landing here as well. Well, it's very rare to have factions pop up like that. Dude. Huh. And they've landed as well. We'll call in our allies. So, 
Oh, I kind of wanted to conquer Taiwan and bring it under Japanese control once again, but... Mm, especially having them control the faction, we might be able to take over it. I still think it's good to accept because it's so hard to become a faction in uh, the Millennium Dawn mod. It took us until the end of the Australian series before we could um, even finish the National Focus Tree and get it. I don't think we were even able to form our own individual faction. But here we go. So far, we've managed to knock out 300k North Koreans, and we're about to surround and conquer their capital in Pyongyang. But we are really gaining ground. We need a bunch of fucking oil. And I guess we get it from the Ruskies. Because they're quite close to us. They do have the province and shipping lanes in sort of that... Uh, Vlad of Lad, uh, Vlad of Ladstock, um, is it Vlada? Or, yeah, Vlad of Ladstock, whatever region, <laughs> to the north. Hey, and they capitulated. Now, we could puppet them, um, but sendings we've taken the south. I think we just bring it completely under our control. Nice. Okay, so, there's a little bit of skirmish with the Chinese over the border, but we just need to, essentially, oh god, I guess we just keep on going. We've got the momentum. 2000. I honestly didn't think we'd be at war with China here today. There was always a chance, like I mentioned, but seeing the Americans back down when we took the south, I would imagine the Chinese would as well. But so far, um, Taiwan is uh, gaining some territory, so we might actually have to divide it between two, three kingdoms. I think we'll, if we're successful, liberate... Um, East Turkmenistan and the Uyghurs and Tibet as well. And then I guess we'll... I do want to try and take as much of China as I can under Japanese control. And I will have to... If they take a decent amount of territory, the government in Taiwan, um, we're going to have to give them a large amount of the south. Oh, but they're actually distracting a lot of divisions down there. Holy shit, okay. And you'd imagine the... Um, the states are probably backing us as well. So, they are slowly bringing units in, but there's a lot of spare ground here. We do still have air supremacy over the peninsula, so let's try and move it into the old Manchukuo region. Now, they do... Okay, so we probably... They probably, as an individual faction, have more divisions than us, but us allied with Taiwan, um, we're probably on par. God, we need to get this fuel in quick, fast. Navy-wise, we've probably got a, we've actually probably got a larger navy than them. To be fair, like they haven't hit their twenty thirty, obviously naval capacity. Looks like Taiwan has sent some units to help us out, and we are really spreading them. They just can't seem to get organized, so we're taking a lot of territory now in northern China. Nice. Things are looking good. We're going to try and install the um, state secrecy bill. But we're doing well. It does look like um, Iran is actually sending volunteers to them. We just need to get this bloody fuel on check, because we're. this is what's going to make us take mass casualties. And really stop our push if we're not careful. Yeah, I don't know why we can't get any more from the Ruskies now. I guess getting them from the States, Canada. Because it does... It's The thing is, getting fuel from the Middle East, they just have to, it just takes a long while to get here. And they probably have to go through the... The um, Chinese Sea and sort of the Chinese state, uh, Strait. However, if we get it from Canada and the US, the fuel can probably pass quite safely through the east coast of Japan. Okay, let's just move our air wing slightly, but we're looking good so far. Our fuel is our major issue. However, we're currently hemorrhaging in political power. We've still got a bunch of debt. Pakistan and the Iranians and the Persians seem to be helping them. But I think we've just got the momentum. 
Oh, here we go. We've had a mass naval fight. Unfortunately, a Taiwanese ship was sunk. But seven... CCP... Ships were sunk. That's fantastic. We've got some more divisions coming as well. So let's send them up here where we can. And... Maybe try and go this way. Yeah, I just don't think they're getting organized. That's what's going on. Oh, we seem to have air supremacy down in the south. Brilliant. And we need to get more of this goddamn fuel. <laughs> Dude, we ran through it so quickly. I had enough fuel reserves for the invasion of North Korea. Just that short war. Not a... A long extended one. We just need to be on point about it. Honestly, we might be better off to dump some of these extra resources coming in. Because we just need that fuel. Because we want to... We want to... Like, I don't want to be going back and forth, right? Getting the air wings activated for like three weeks and then off for a week. And having the navy operate for three weeks then off and then rotate. I want to get to a point where... We are importing more than what we're consuming to have a constant flow and supply. Which is still not met yet. So, and I also don't want to limit our civilian construction. Come on. Looks like Turkey wants to send us some logistics. That's awesome. Air supremacy over the top. It's just the fuel problem. We are still taking a lot of territory. Oh, bro, we're looking good. Unfortunately, some of those convoys have been intercepted. Yeah, I just don't think they uh, just came, seem to form up. Look at this. We've just got them on the back foot. Every time they go try to go forward, they keep on going two steps back, which is brilliant. And if we can capture and surround a bunch of them in northern China... That would be fantastic. Looks like the US wants to invest in Japan still. Hell yeah, brother. Um, like... Okay, so finally, dude. 365 oil. I guess it was like struggling to come from the States. We're better off importing it from Russia. Holy shit. Alright, things are looking good. Oh, dude, we've somehow managed to squish them between Mongolia and the north. Oh my god. Okay, so let's redirect some of the air force now. Took us a little while to get our fuel capacity on point. But it looks like the new reign under the Admiral is doing alright. 200k, oh my god. But so far, we're doing most of the work in northern China. So then we're going to be able to have the claim for the territory there. Oh, dude. We're gobbling so well up this territory. Keep on keeping on. Oh, unfortunately, those Taipei forces down in the south are um, getting encircled. Okay, let's just uh, try and upgrade where we can. This is always annoying for me. I found a <laughs> fucking... Trying to upgrade and research when you're in an active war. I wish you could queue things up a little bit. To be fair to the Chinese Navy, they are doing quite well in disrupting any convoys trying to come on in. But we have just been so, so successful in surrounding and crushing units here. Holy shit. Uh, I guess we just, like, force past the bill. Unfortunately, Western Outlook and Emerging has grown a little bit. Um, we want to go down the right-hand side of this because we want to try and repeal as many of the pacifism stuff as we can. And firmly enshrine the army as in charge of Japan as we're still trying to 
continue on our main objective of this series of bringing back the Empire of the Rising Sun. We want to try and get back Japan's imperial territories at its height. So, a lot of China. We've still got a lot of wars down in the um, Southeast Asia region to come. And I wouldn't actually mind extending it just a little bit further. I think it would be uh, funny to bring Australia in under Japanese control <laughs> as an Australian myself. Because they could have done it. But they fucking nearly didn't. They uh, bombed Darwin, sent submarines and stuff in and around to have a sneaky peek. But they were too preoccupied. Couldn't properly hold Manchuko, let alone fucking Victoria. <laughs> anyway, um, we've managed to take half, them. I, half of the country. I don't know if I like the name of the... China encirclement faction. I wonder if I can change that. But to be fair, we might be able to now invite a bunch of factions in. Which is awesome. Oh, dude, that's so, so fortunate. Yeah, it must be a thing that if um, Japan in the Millennium Dawn mod attacks Ty uh, J China early, Taiwan can create a faction with them. Okay, so our fuel is really fine at the moment. And it's only southern China that's uh, yet to capitulate. Dude. I don't think they were expecting like a full-on charge from the peninsula. Oh my god, it's ballooned to 300k. We have lost less in this war than in the South Korean push. Just because they were like prepared through those naval invasions. So they, they kind of knew we were coming, the South Koreans, planting mines and building on up. So they've lost 40k, we've lost 17k. So it's a bit, but nothing too crazy. Oh, dude. We've nearly... ...liberated, um... ...Western uh, Xinjiang, which is perfect. And we're about to crush a bunch of... ...Persians up in the north. Oh, yeah, why are they... Why is... ...Iran helping them? Kind of weird. Sending a lot of military forces as well. Okay. Oh, dude. To be fair, 2004 is a pretty early war for them. Hey, and they've capitulated. Oh my god. Fan bloody tastic. This could have been the US if they didn't back down um, in South Korea. So, firstly, let's take what I want. So. We'll try and can get as much of the north as I want, because I want it directly under my control. Now, normally I would take all of China. However, Taiwan really helped us out in this one, so we've got to help them. Um, oh, no, we don't want to liberate that, because that will give them all of it. We want to satellite the East Turkic peoples. And Tibet as well. Nice. That's what I want to do. And then we'll make things look a little bit nicer here. Giving this to me. Like just to even it up. Now this is the difficult one. Hmm. They are my ally, not my puppet. The Republic of China. So I do want to try and greedily take as much of this territory for Japan as I can, but I also will need to give them some. But to be fair, they were more of a distracting force. Like, if they took all of the south, I could have given them more. They just lost a lot. However, they did sort of delay, distract, and divide the Chinese army in half while we smashed them in the north. So would we have been able to have those crazy territorial gains? Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, let's um, give them like Fujian and sort of this bottom bit just to see how that looks. Because they're right on the coast. Nice. So they will be rewarded. I kind of want Hong Kong for myself because Hong Kong's such a fantastic piece of territory, even though it's a little enclave. But hey. Um, let's bring that under direct Japanese control. Because countries like Singapore, Macau, and like Hong Kong, they are worth 
so so much even on that small territory so should I give them that yep we'll give them another Chinese province province prefecture what, what is what are they so I guess it's all gonna be prefectures now and I think I want the rest so we'll give them a little bit of territory but at the end of the day we're playing as Japan they're not my subjects and my allies, and we're going to try and shaft them. Look, we could even betray them if we fucking want. I think I'll take this for myself. Bit greedy, but fuck it. Alright, let's uh, end that there. Five states, 31 taken for me. I reckon we did 75% of the work. I think that's fair. But this is what we own as... The Japanese, hell yeah, my political power is shocking. China Encirclement Network. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could change the the name of that, I guess. But anyway, nice. Dude, what a hell of an episode. That's massive. Well now, so their nationalist outlook, the Chinese Youth Party. Okay. We could leave the faction if we want. Can we somehow take control? Because we want to be able to invite countries in. No, I don't know if we can. Maybe it was just RNG of the fact that they went nationalist. I don't fucking know. I love how gun ho they were to um, help out. Right, let's uh, stop importing all this petroleum because we don't need to. Because we're naturally going to get it back now that our navy and air force are not burning heaps. And we'll make plans and preparations to continue our conquests down into Vietnam and Thailand, I suppose. Which, I might puppet one of them. Maybe Vietnam, make them the dominant power down there. I definitely want most of Indonesia directly under my control. Uh, I've got to deal with the Philippines as well. And... Although the Ruskies have helped us, we probably have a claim to some of their northern border territory, potentially. Just need to reorganize some of our trade, because we don't want to be getting resources from countries we're probably going to go to war with soon. But hey, massive episode here. China and North Korea kaput. Fully under our control. Holy shit. That is some crazy territorial gains. And we're a faction as well. So hopefully we can make this faction here in Southeast... Or not South, it's East Asia. Now the predominant power over here. Hopefully we can rival other factions like NATO and um, CSTO as well. And we'll try and grow incorporating more nations where we can. Now, oh god, we need to definitely quell some of the uprisings and public discontent in those occupied regions. Yeah, so I can't rename the faction here. No, that's a shame. I think there's a mod. You can change the color and stuff. We've got a bunch of territory we need to repair then factories. We might even stop some of this because we've got 160 factories now. We've actually, like, doubled. <laughs> even more. What do we have? Like, 70 or so? Oh, jeez, yeah. We have, like, 80 more factories. We're probably better off converting some of them to military in the end. But anyway, unfortunately, on that note, I've got to end today's video here. Thank you very much for watching episode 3 of the Hearts of Iron 4 Millennium Dawn Imperial Japanese series. Stay tuned for episode 4 coming out the exact same time tomorrow where we continue on to rebuild Imperial Japan. Leave another comments. We like me to expand and conquer. Now that we're a faction, we might be able to rival CSTO and maybe even go after the Ruskies. Like, we're going to have enough strength. We could, um become a global superpower in this series because we're doing really really well now that we've got china and korea 
under our control. The world is our oyster. We need to hold on to the territory that we've got and continue to claim more. We're making plans and preparations to go into Vietnam and hopefully try and dominate and claim some of the South Southern Territory. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I would really much appreciate it. So, in the last episode, if you haven't gone and watched it, highly recommend you do. We managed to occupy North Korea and China. Now, with a head... Oh, okay. So, we can spend the political power here now and become the head of the faction here, with the Republic of China being our allies. And we can actually... Huh. Invite the Philippines. Uh, I kind of wanted to conquer them. <laughs> it, this, this faction is working quite well. Um, we are... So if we become their allies, we can get a war claim without justifying one against Vietnam. Well, I guess that works out well. Although I wanted to incorporate the Philippines and Taiwan into, like, our own Japanese core territory, this alliance is probably better suited for us to keep. Oh my god, we're hemorrhaging 83 billion? Jesus. That's because we've got a crazy population now and they're all entitled to extensive <laughs> welfare and free healthcare shit <laughs> we need to reduce that when we can holy fuck all right so the jsdf the japanese self-defense force still currently in charge what is this, the fifth leader we had the second of the military mr admiral let's try and Reduce some of this. Dude, it just wiped like 80 billion off the fucking budget. Holy shit. That's looking a lot better. Okay, so why aren't we in this? Oh, I guess they haven't called me in. What's going on here? So... Vietnam attacked the Philippines, so we were able to bring them into the faction. It's a shame we can't rename it. It's called the China Encirclement Network, <laughs> which is pretty funny. I guess we'll just ask the Philippines if we can come on in, because we can't move from our territory, and we're not even fighting on the border there. Our air wings aren't even operating efficiently either. So that was cool. We don't have to justify against them. We can just war deck them. Straight up, we are hemorrhaging a little bit of political power at the moment. But now, we're building a East Asia faction that could potentially rival NATO or CSTO. So let me know in the comments, feedback and suggestions, tips and tricks, or what you'd like me to expand and conquer. Also, the Indonesians were guaranteeing them, so they haven't been called on in. We definitely want to try and take as much of, like, essentially what Imperial Japan had at the height of its territory. We've been called in now. Our units are battle-hardened from the recent wars in China. And looks like Vietnam is about to fall. Now, I'm kind of tempted to maybe puppet Vietnam. Because... I really don't need much more territory under my control. It's just going to be harder to um, hold, essentially. If we could make... See that province there that's like Indochina? If we can make one faction there, essentially the regional power, puppeted, subservient to me, I think we will. So maybe we'll do it to Vietnam. We did it, You know in the uh, Australian series, we made like Thailand, an absolute fucking chad of a country? I think we'll do the same with um, Vietnam this time around. But however, like Malaysia, Indonesia, I think I'll bring that directly under Japanese control. And I wouldn't mind bringing in Australia. I think it'd be funny. They never took it in WW2, but maybe in this alternative timeline, they seized the opportunity in 2005. And I guess then we'll just sort of see where we are once we've got all of Asia under our control you know what we might have a strong enough military force and apparatus to maybe go against the Ruskies and CSTO like we actually might be able to push from eastern Russia in Siberia 
70k of lost. We've only lost 500. Yes, 500 Japanese soldiers. Absolutely nothing. Another earthquake. Dude. Although there's a lot of bonuses with the um, Japanese focus tree, you do obviously have the realistic earthquakes and economic destructions. As much, like, honestly, I think it's actually easier if you actually want to have an easier playthrough on Millennium Dawn, playing with the default Turkish or um, Japanese mod, you probably could conquer um, the former Ottoman Empire territory, maybe even the former Imperial Japan territory, easier with the default tech trees rather than these mods. Because these mods don't necessarily make it easier, they just make it more realistic. <laughs> Because they, like, realistically do stuff. If anything, it just makes it harder. Which is kind of cool. I don't mind it. But it's just, like, interesting. Let me know if you guys have played both. For example, like, Turkey. And Japan. How successful were you playing with the, um, sub mod or not? But you can find it on the workshop. The Japanese and, um... Turkish focus stream. Yeah, we're still hemorrhaging cash a bit. We need to change this. Maybe go with free triage. And is that going to fix it? Fucking hell. Four trillion in debt. <laughs> Shit. We do have air supremacy over Indochina. And we are still slowly but surely progressing. But things have halted slightly. As it's these countries here. Thailand. Um... Maybe the Myanmar and stuff. When they're really, like, narrow one-tile countries, they can really narrow adva advancements. Like, they really slow things down. Come on. Only a little bit longer. We set up a naval invasion this year. Because we're struggling to push on through. Now our oil's gone to shit. We're going to need to import a bunch more. It's because we've got the Navy actively working. Okay, there we go now. That's a bit better. We might get this naval invasion off. Uh, at the moment, we're actually getting improved. Essentially javelin. LMAT, anti-aircraft and anti-tank equipment. Because our vehicles and tanks are now up to date. We were already quite good on the research and construction. Like, we've got a bunch of military and civilian factories now. We just need to upgrade and rapidly modernize the Japanese army. But it kind of sucks that we only have four research slots. I'm sure there's more on the focus tree somewhere. But for example, playing as Germany with a custom focus tree just, um, which is probably better than this one, just the default one. You can get up to like eight or six research slots. Speaking of Germany, <laughs> speaking of the devils, we uh, can get some investment from them. Okay, and uh, let's just try and upgrade some of these stat modifiers. You kind of forget, you kind of like, your eyes draw to the better quality equip equipment and stuff. But you are better off like stat wise to get better stuff. Uh, Navy wise, it's probably the right to focus on that. Because we're still a little bit away from upgrading our vehicles and stuff crazily. So we can't do any of these amendments just yet. And we need more, we actually need more national support. We can't actually use any more. We're kind of gridlocked down there, unfortunately, because although the army's in charge, it's not crazily popular. Whoa, what the fuck is this? Okay, whatever. Just a whole big wall of text that I don't need to read. Dude, how's this war still going on? Oh, nice. Uh, they want to bail out, but we've landed here. So, hopefully, this push should finish them off. 
Yeah, sometimes you just need to do a naval invasion. When they're really holding you off in such a narrow country, because they weren't expecting it. Hey, perfect. Nice. The Treaty of Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh City is under our control. And I think we just pop at them, yeah. Actually, I could take some of this Northern Territory for myself. Uh, no. Let's just uh, give it all to Vietnam. Nice. Look at this Chad. <laughs> he looks so young and youthful. <laughs> we can't request any forces yet. But I think we'll get Laos and a couple of others. Oh, they've actually changed the color of the faction as well. Nice. To more that sort of pink and white. Compared to the uh, the blue of the ROC beforehand. Okay, so protectivism has now gone down, which is good. Revisionism is now up. Wait, Liberia wants us to join our faction, or oh, they want to join our faction? Okay. I suppose we invite them? Hang on. They're at war with like three factions though. Do we do this? Like sure, why not? Oh, dude, I haven't played as a faction this early on. Like as a nationals faction. Because like, we can actually make some inroads into Africa if we want. Oh jeez. Yeah, so... We'll accept, so then we can send the army over. Well, let's go into Africa. Why not? To be fair, we've got well over a hundred divisions at our disposal. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's um try and take some African territory. Dude, if we could set up a sphere of influence in sub-Saharan Africa, that'd be sick. Because we've got the military. Like, why not? Let's influence, bring uh, Japanese influence into Africa. The Chinese are doing it, so why can't we? To be fair, we might as well try and create like a bit of a, a state over there or something. Because at the moment, the way we're set up is a faction like this, being able to invite other nations in, like the Philippines um, and Liberia. We might be able to go for like a world conquest or something, I don't know. I'm really enjoying this Japanese campaign. It's uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, so... Oh, God. They're still holding on barely. So, where can we land? Like, here? Yeah, I guess here. So, let's send a bunch of Japanese divisions over to go and help on out. So, they applied for membership I guess we just join their war straight up so we can get involved quick smart we might even be able to send some jets over if we want let's call everyone in because they might be able to get there quicker than what we can the Chinese the China encirclement network we need to change that <laughs> what can I call it let me know in the comments what's your suggestions the um, the great East Asian co-prosperity sphere is <laughs> like what is this in like default I'll survive for? I can't remember. I don't know. The Coalition of the East Asian Brilliance <laughs> or something. I don't fucking know. Just the East Asian Alliance, I think, is... Or just the Asian... Or it could even just be the Asian Alliance. I don't know. The Southeast Asian Self-Defense Force. Because <laughs> we are a defensive faction. We're not an aggressive conquering uh, military apparatus, are we? No. We're a defensive alliance. <laughs> That's what we'll play it as. Alright, uh, let's uh, stop these air wings from operating. Because they do not need to be. Yeah, so if I could split like the army in half. Particularly with our Filipino. Vietnamese. And... Chinese allies. We can... We've got enough. To divide the army in half. And maybe build a... Uh, African colonial empire. And same with just dominating the rest of um, 
Southeast Asia. Look, we're going to have a problem maybe in Indonesia, but everywhere else we should be able to conquer. But why not? Let's adopt the ancient British colonial policy of taking territory in Africa. Oh, dude, we're actually going to be fighting against the Brits. Oh, shit, they're sending volunteers there. Oh, fuck. Looks like China's landed. And it's only a matter of days before we can get involved. Okay. Well. Let's form up a front line. Dude, who would have thought? Japanese and <laughs> fucking British soldiers battling it out. Once again, in uh, this time, 2005, I'm sure they're going to be pissed off about that. But why the fuck are you there, British? That is hilarious. What are you doing down here in Africa? Before us. Right, let's get some better quality anti-tank stuff. But we've landed, and hopefully, thankfully, we, there was a naval base there we can just go on in. But we should be able to rapidly... Start taking their territory back. And we'll see how we go. I don't know who will... Well, we've got an ally there. In eastern Liberia. But then there's Liberia itself. We're in uh, the equatorial Guinea region, I think. Yeah, you, Guinea region. So western Sahara. Okay. Yeah, we'll see how we go. We might just puppet someone here. I don't know. I kind of want to make one big nation down here. So if it's like Guinea or Liberia or whatever, whatever that African nation here, Sierra Leone, whatever. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll try and make it like a huge nation. And take the neighbors like Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire, maybe Algeria, that could be the plan. Uh, we want the uh, neighbor to get over here quick, fast. But we'll see how we go. It might be easier said than done. Dude, we got 9 million in our population. <laughs> we haven't even once changed the uh, conscription draft. Holy shit. Okay, let's try and upgrade our fighter pilot capacity. Oh, nice. So... We can puppet Liberia. Liberia is an interesting country because... I, I don't... I'm not American, so I'm not entirely sure about the history, but I, I believe the US was involved in creating the country. Didn't they send them back? Isn't that how it was created? Because it's their flag. Yeah, I believe so. But there's now there's two <laughs> Liberias that we've created. So I think... Because, like, we've come in on the Eastern Liberian justification. How about... Now that we've puppeted Liberia... Let's just make a huge United States of Liberia <laughs> in uh, Africa. I think that'd be hilarious. Yeah, so now we've got Guinea. Yeah, so I'd rather not have Guinea be a uh, faction. So hang on. Yeah, let's give it to the Liberians. <laughs> oh, fuck me. So hang on. There we go. We are using a player-led peace conference to stop border gore. That is mod compatible with Millennium Dawn, so you don't need to worry about that. United for reconciled de reconciled democracy. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, well let's uh, push into yeah. So what's this Sierra Leone? <laughs> I love how Liberia is like Japan. Come help us. I'm like okay. This is the Eastern Liberians. We go over there. Oh, yeah, so Liberia. West Liberia. You want to be liberated? Hey! <laughs> it's like... We basically came on over and have forged a West Liberia. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Well, that's the thing, though, because it's always annoying setting up naval invasions to get into Africa. Obviously, you've got the resources, the wealth, and the population. It's, like, so easy because they just don't have modern militaries so like, to conquer it. For example, in the Germany series, I wasn't really planning on um, going into Africa, but for some reason we got all these free 
justifications role playing in NATO, so we were able to get a bunch of territory there. That was a fun series. I really enjoyed that Germany series. But yeah, once again, over the coming weeks and months, I'm going to be smashing this Millennium Dawn series. And once I get burnout, look, we got Kaiserreich, we got Fallout. I'm uh, really enjoying the Huts of Iron 4 YouTube channel. Dude, we got so much content. And then once again, like I said, say in a year or so, Huts of Iron sort of dies. Everyone's sort of bored about it. Um, I could rename this to this channel to Simsy Grand Strategy or the Strategy. And we can play Paradox-centric titles. Uh, potentially. I don't know. There's so much Hoi4 content that we might not never deviate. But there's always a chance. Hey, Sierra Leone has capitulated. But yeah, I could see maybe playing CK3 or something. But hey, Vicky3 is coming out soon. So maybe something like that might be up your guys' interest. But um... Yeah, so what the hell is this? Oh, okay, so they're a faction in there. Oh, well, nice. <laughs> so they're now... Fully under con uh, control. Nice, we've got a little enclave here. Well, now that I've sent them all over here... Yeah, um, we might as well continue to grow our puppet... Liberia... Uh, <laughs> the... United Iber uh, Liberian State... I keep on saying Iberia? Liberia. <laughs> I just caught myself saying that. Was I saying Liberia? Was I saying Iberia a bit? Maybe. Iberia is firmly in NATO at the moment. Liberia. So, we might try and take some of their neighbours out. The only problem is Mali might be guaranteed by the French. Same with Algeria. I'm sure the French will be pissed off because the French military still operates around here in Mauritania and stuff quite a bit. Anyway, unfortunately, I've got to wrap, th wrap things up here today. Thank you very much for watching episode 4 of the Millennium Dawn Hearts of Iron 4 Japanese series. Stay tuned for episode 5 coming out the exact same time tomorrow where I guess we continue into Indochina and we could very well continue into Africa as well. So now we've got two theatres that have opened up which is bloody fantastic in Africa and uh, now in Asia. We're strong enough to fight on both, I think. We're going to be war decking Thailand and we're also going to continue our African expansions potentially going into Mali and the Ivory Coast, maybe declaring war upon Cote d'Ivoire. So, if you'd like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. We're still continuing on this imperialistic Japanese campaign, trying to bring back the empire of the rising sun. So, support it if you like the sound of that. For more Hearts of Iron content on the channel, feedback and tips and tricks uh, recommended in the comments. We can finally go down the Education Council real rebuilding stuff. Finally. Okay, and we had 40 billion coming in. Now we're at a bit more of a deficit. Um, we still have 3 trillion, is that? As a debt. So we're going to try and repay that. Um, we have to go after Laos first. I misspoke then, Thailand. Oh, the Ruskies are doing something. Alright, we'll go against Laos first, then we'll make plans to go after Thailand. In the last episode, we managed to take out Vietnam, and I think in this uh, Indo-China region, I think we will probably try and bring it all under Vietnamese control, and um, essentially make our puppet the strong regional power down here. As we continue to go down and try and envelop Indonesia and the surrounding islands into the Japanese Empire. But holy shit, Laos capitulated so quickly. Oh my god. And we'll give all the political power to not myself. We'll give it to Vietnam. Nice. We are currently in a faction with the Philippines. The Republic of Korea and the newly formed United Liberian States. <laughs> so currently half of the Japanese army is operating here in Indochina. We're gonna 
declare war upon Thailand. We'll start justifying against them. And the other half of the army is in Africa, trying to build and secure and get more allies. But the way we're going, dude, we could do a world conquest. <laughs> we're in such a decent position. If we can get all of Asia united under one faction, we can rival anyone. Like, we've literally got more than half of the world's population probably here under our control. We could rise up against NATO or CSTO or any other faction. So, let's start justifying against Thailand. And hopefully they put up more of a fight than uh, Laos. Looks like the Republic of China is coming over here to help us out as well. They were instrumental in creating the faction. Okay, so the justification against Mali has been complete. So we'll expand into there, and then we might do the same down in the Ivory Coast as well. So the only problem is going after Mali and sort of in this West African theater is if the French get involved because they were firmly here back in the day. Oh my god, they had five divisions and Mali's about to fall. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> the Japanese are adopting ancient 1800s, well I guess it's ancient, but it's 1800s, 1900s uh, colonialism. Oh my god, and Mali's capitulated. Shit. <laughs> and we're going to continue to grow uh, Liberia, who, who are my puppets down here. So we're going to set them up as sort of the major power in... Africa, with essentially the controlling power being in Tokyo. So, now that we're here, we might as well push up to Algeria, because it goes all the way to the coast. We'll go for the Ivory Coast here as well, but I think we go after Mauritania. There's a bunch of countries over there that we can look to go down. Okay, so, yes, I think we want to go down sort of the truth textbooks. Alrighty. Um, just looking around the world, NATO's still a thing. Uh, Turkey left, which is interesting. Iraq joined on in. Italy seems to have left. We can't invite Turkey. They would be a valuable ally, but it doesn't seem likely. Uh, the Ruskies are now emerging. They were democratic at one point. And unfortunately, emerging and Western and non-aligned is growing in Japan at the moment. So, that's something we need to keep an eye on. Uh, the birth of His Highness. Nice. We've got a growing... ...monarchical tree, I suppose. I went with the army taking control instead of... ...the Emperor and his descendants. This time around, we'll just use him as a bit of a figurehead. While the army as the main control under the Admiral. Okay, we're making 23 billion now. We've reduced some of our spending and we're slowly but surely tr uh, cutting down that huge debt. Uh, we have unlocked some better quality artillery so let's look to upgrade that. 2005 equipment we basically have so nearly Japan is modern, has modern, modernized Anti-air, anti-tank, and artillery as well. We haven't got any drones, so it's probably not a bad idea getting some 1995 drones in. We're getting a, har a, a carrier hull. We're getting better quality logistics to help with our amphibious warfare. We've been doing a fair few of those, and particularly with the wars against Indonesia coming up, we're going to need to be able to island hop and land quicker and effectively. So let's go with the textbook of truth as we continue to go down the nationalist and fascism route. The JSDF is still 29%, while the Japanese Communist Party is currently growing. We still currently are under an economic boom, with the occasional earthquake and national disaster coming in. But so far, we're doing well. The economy is trickling on along well. We have an absurd amount of military and civilian factories, now that China's under our control. And we just had a financial crash. Are you fucking shitting me? Oh, god damn it. I was just clearing the debt. We're going to have to lend some. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, no. 
I jinxed myself. How the fuck did that happen? Minus 300 political power. Stagnation. Shit. The financial crisis has hit. Well, the Japanese one. Because we were a little bit stuck going into a depression economically. Oh no, it's happened again. Yeah, look at this. The financial emergency budget. Shit. So, Japan, unfortunately, has, a, has had a financial crash. Oh, we might not be able to go to war for a while. Because we've got negative public order at minus 500. Oh, no. That's really interesting. It's literally delayed our expansion. 2006. So we're just going to have to try and wait for that to subside. Uh, we'll ask Vietnam for some volunteers just to help us out. Although we don't really need them. But no, we're in an economic downturn. You've got to be kidding me. Got plenty of manpower. December now, 2006. It's really stagnated, yeah. We're minus 500 political power. And I don't really know if there's much we can do that. Like, we're at the bottom of the barrel. Just looking at all these negative modifiers. Democracy, 25%. Yeah, it's like literally, we were, we've were we been, let's be honest, after we took China, we've been steamrolling. But now it's like the game has like <laughs> halted our progression massively. That's kind of cool, because we're just like burning months and weeks now. And there's not really we, much we can do about it. Our stability is shocking, our war support's fine, but this economic downturn going into 2007, we need a third emergency budget. It is really hurting us. It's kind of cool. I do highly recommend the Japan submod. Hopefully, we don't fall into civil war. That would be a nightmare. The final emergency budget. Yeah, so I just we have to sort of storm on through it. So we can go from stagnation to stable. That would be ideal because it does cost quite a bit. Okay, so we're slowly but surely getting some minor financial recovery. Now moving into February 2007. Holy shit. That literally delayed us by like a year or so. And stopped the attack of Thailand. Wow. We, the government nearly collapsed, let's be honest. Okay, corruption's two. Right now we're making about 41 billion, which is good. Yeah, 250 days for more of the financial. It's going to take us 250 days for the um, financial crisis to end and for the economy to be revitalized. All right, July now, 2007. Still waiting for the economy to stabilize, but holy shit. Oh, there's a research slot here. Let's take that. Oh shit, I, probably, I didn't realize that was there. Fuck. I could have gone that a lot earlier. Oh well. What? Afghanistan joined the Anglo-Saxon alliance. There were a lot of countries leaving the EU and NATO. But the UK has left NATO to make an alliance with the Afghanis. With Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> what the fuck? Alright, looks like they're making some sort of... Communist... Faction. Maybe. <laughs> uh, still minus 500. Okay, at least we're on stable growth. Well... Yeah, there's not really much we can do. We just need a sort of... Wait until we're out of this crisis. Nice. Stock market boom. Hang on, when's that going to pop up? Oh, it grew then. Nice. We've got the RNG. Just takes a while. Jesus Christ, now November. Skipped a little bit ahead. Nothing's really been going on. I've just been sort of sitting here. Waiting for the economy to recover. But it really hit Japan hard. Cyprus is, wants to leave the EU. We are making political net power now, but literally for two years, maybe more, 
We haven't been able to gain anything, which sucks. Okay, so we can't go any further down that. Um, maybe we should go down this. Because I did want to do that Aguarian reform at some point. The United States has declared war upon Cuba. Wow. That's a pretty big development. We can't invite Cuba. And the states have left NATO as well. NATO has pretty much been completely dissolved. And the Freedom League has been formed. Oh no, it's still a thing. But it looks like the states are going with the Monroe Doctrine. And they're going after good old Castro. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Invading Cuba. Oh, he's emerging. Oh. So CSTO could come on in. So the Freedom League, Iraq, the Bahamas, Belize, Canada and the US. Interesting. Okay. So, we might be able to go after the states if we want. And take the western Pacific states, like in uh, Man in the High Castle. That might be cool. Dividing the country in two. Between us and the Taiwanese, <laughs> instead of the Germans. Um, well, looking at this, I don't fucking know which one to go down. Which one seems more nationalistic and... Uh, what would the army sort of do? So nothing with, like, freedom. <laughs> freedom of the press, liberty, no, no, no. I think this. Suspend schemes, and then we'll go down this. Yeah, because nationalizing managing industries, that might be a good idea for us. Oh, finally! The justification against Thailand has been complete. Dude, I didn't nearly didn't think we um, we're going to have the invasion here today. We're just going to have it here at the end. Nearly clickbaited you, <laughs> saying at the start of this episode that we're going to do it. Right, so, after the delay, it wasn't the most overly interesting. It just sort <laughs> of literally stopped us. But I guess it allowed other countries to... Strengthen up, gain some momentum. And for three years, the Thai man knew we were coming. Alright, so things have now kicked off. Our allies want to join. And thankfully they're alone. As the Japanese are back in Siam, baby. Oh, we're gaining a lot of ground as well. So, we've got China helping us out. Looks like the Philippines are sending a division. And we're pushing from the Vietnamese territory as well. Once Thailand has capitulated, we'll basically give most of it, except for that border territory, potentially near Malaysia. Um, I wouldn't mind getting that under my control. 10 million manpower. Jeez. Kind of crazy. They've lost 60k, we've lost 2k, and they are halfway towards capitulation. Nice, the uh, justification for Mali is complete? No, sorry, I've, we're done with Mali, it was um, the Ivory Coast is now complete. The Cote d'Ivoire. Well, let's quickly deal with them. I wonder if we're going to be able to capitulate them quicker than we are with Thailand. Seems like the Republic of China seems to have moved more units into Africa, which is interesting, even though we need them more so in Asia, you'd think. And looks like the Ivory Coast will be under Japanese control. Oh, nice. We're surrounding a bunch of Thai infantry here. Our Navy and Air Force have supremacy. Oh, back over here real quick. And let's continue to build up the Liberian United States of Africa. Hell yeah, look at this. They're definitely the um, dominant regional power in the uh, the coast now. Yeah, well maybe we go after Algeria, Mauritania, Niger. 
some of the larger countries. If we go up to Algeria, we're going to be able to get a Mediterranean port, which would be insane. However, once again, um, France and Africa. Uh, France and their ambitions in Africa. Although they're not officially there, you know, I mean, they're there. Most of this region of the world still speaks French as a second language, which is super interesting. So let's set up some more of those front lines. Perfect. Cool. All right, back over to Thailand. We're still dealing with this. Uh, the capital hasn't fallen. <laughs> Speaking of the French, they're looking to invest. <laughs> they know. That they can get some good investment in uh, Mali, I suppose. I don't know. Alright. Winning in a fair few pockets where we can. Uh, Cuba has capitulated to the United States. So they've been brought in by force. I love how the Bahamas would just say, Yeah, we'll join. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, get some better quality ships. As most of our, like I said, tanks, vehicles, equipment is actually on point. Alright, the capital's now fallen. Um, I suppose we leave them be. Because it's going to give us a boost to the army, I suppose. Okay. Oh god, they've lost 150k to our 4k. Nice. Now, unfortunately, we're sort of at the one tile point in Thailand. How have they not fallen? Which is a shame. So, what we're going to have to do... Is probably do a naval invasion. We've used about 60% of our fuel. We've got about 40 left. Thankfully now, we've got such large fuel silos that we can last in combat a bit more. Wow, we've ballooned to 222 factories. Holy shit, that's absurd. And we've nearly wiped our debt. We mathematically could if we want. So, um, which side do we want to go down here? No, I don't think we want to go down that path. Maybe the audit? The right to strike. No, we don't want people to be able to strike in their factories. That doesn't sound very nationalistic. Um, I think we want to go down there. Nationalize industries. I don't fucking know. Who cares? We're going to get some bonuses here and there. Min-maxing the Japanese focus tree and the national focus tree. I could give a shit about. As long as we're conquering and um, taking land effectively. That's all I really care about. Anyway, we've run out of time here unfortunately here today. Thank you very much for watching episode 5. Stay tuned for episode 6 coming out the exact same time tomorrow where we continue this war against Thailand. I think, yeah, we're going to need to set up some naval invasions uh, in and around here just to bypass this blockade that's come up. We're still doing more um, adventures <laughs> into Africa and hopefully we've stabilized a bit. Dude, this is a bit of a rough episode. Nothing of really... Uh, my undoing it was just sort of rng the financial crisis hit us and delayed us significantly so i suppose if you're not prepared prepared and are a little bit more unstable playing as japan that can really throw a curveball here today we're going to continue our war against thailand and maybe kick off some wars in africa as well so if you'd like the sound of that feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new i'd really much appreciate it it's may 2009 and pretty much since 2006 we've had a bit of a decline as japan as a regional power in asia we hit the ground running early on conquering the korean peninsula and china but unfortunately due to the financial crisis uh, things have taken a little bit of turn for the worst we've managed to reduce our debt but our stability our political power we had to wait years before we could attack uh, Thailand um, so at the moment we're still sort of recovering from that and the national government the army is still weak so this is really something we have to uh, keep an eye on man highly recommend the Japan submod it uh, really makes things a lot harder. 
not only do you have the uh, national disaster crises, such as earthquakes, typhoons, um, and we've got nuclear disasters coming up soon. Because it's, yeah, 2012? Yeah, it's nearly around about that time. Um, the financial situation of Japan can be iffy, but... So far, we have 10 million manpower, which is absurd. We've got a bunch of military factories as well. Now, currently, we are slowly but surely taking territory against Thailand. However, we are a little bit locked here, fighting over one tile here and there. So we're going to have to do a naval invasion. And we're out of fuel as well, as this war has gone on for a little bit longer than what I anticipated. So we're just going to have to go around here. Now, there's not too much availability because influence in other countries you need to get that guaranteed oil supply. So we've got the Air Force running and the Navy just to add those little bits of extra bonuses as we push in. But once Thailand is capitulated, I'll probably give half of it to Vietnam, who is our puppet in Indochina and going to be the ruling faction. And I'll take a little bit of territory for myself. As we make plans and preparations to bring Malaysia, Indonesia, and then eventually Australia into this eastern faction. Which is hilariously named by the Taiwanese, the Chinese Encirclement Network. <laughs> the Navy was currently in uh, Africa, so it's taking a little while to get back over to Thailand. Um, we have made a little bit of progress in Africa, as if you haven't watched the last couple of episodes, we've managed to set up the Liberian states of Africa, which um, has taken a couple countries out. The Ivory Coast, Mali, bringing it under our control. It's essentially our puppet force there. Alright, this naval invasion is now launched, that the Navy has rocked up. Awesome. Uh, we're getting more National Cabinet stuff. We could look to get better quality jets of our own. We managed to take a lot of the Korean and Chinese Air Force. That's what we're mostly using. With some of our own better quality fighters, but close air support. We haven't had an upgrade since the 90s. Yeah, so we're just struggling to push. It's just those one tiles. They basically can nearly hold indefinitely because of the supply. We lost 4k. They've lost 150. They're so, so close to capitulating. This naval invasion is what we need. Oh no. Is that a re regime change? We've been in a... Um, national coalition. Well, no, it says coalition, but we're technically not, I guess. Just the army's been in charge since 2000. Oh no, I hope not. Okay, uh, we probably need to optimize the air force slightly because they're operating actually in the formerly... Like, original territory of Vietnam. We need to get them into these newly acquired Taiwanese... Thai, Thai lands. There's an airfield free just west of Bangkok, so let's do that. Let's bring them further down as well. Because not all of my planes are operating in that last little bit of Thai territory. It might actually help them get on in. Oh, Scotland has had a referendum and they've made the decision to stay. Okay, so they're actually battling it out a little bit. Oh, so there's going to be an election. Oh, shit. Even though no elections... Oh, it's because they're gaining influence. Oh, shit. Um, I guess we attack the DPJ. Because they were in charge last time. Oh, no. We could have a... um. Civil War here. We've managed to shoot down 24 Thai aircraft, which is pretty good. And we're still struggling to get this naval invasion on. Dude, this war is going on for ages, and I'm not liking it. We might need to switch things up navally. Hang on. Let's go with convoy raiding the entire peninsula here, because we're kind of neglecting a little bit of that western side. Oh, we are progressing now. Taking some tiles. Dude, they are so, so close to... Capitulating. Oh no, what the fuck? Oh shit! Oh no! Well, that's just unlucky. So we've lost neo imperialism. Fuck! You've got to be kidding me. 
It's just because we've had such... Literally, since 2006, the GFC has weakened our country. Why are we losing... Why have there been two Prime Ministers? So, we're back as a Western Outlook nation. We're still global invent, uh, interventionalism. That's not too bad. But we need the neo-imperialism if you want to keep on attacking. Ah, uh, shit. Well, we need to wrap up this war against Thailand, and then we'll try and restabilize and bring the army back in. Shit, because the last time we brought them in, it was a coup. We might actually need to hold the vote... Oh, yeah, I can't afford to just, um, disable the army and then retake the territory. So large as well. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, there's not really much we could do about it. Like, our political power went to shit because of the, um, financial crisis. And various disasters and stuff. Shit. Well, bit of a change in government. Alright, cool storyline. Japan. Oh, God. We lost one frigate, however, we sunk about seven of theirs. Holy shit. The Japanese Navy had a real good run of things there. Absolutely decimating the Thai fleet. Yeah, it's just like all these factions are growing. I think it's because of our influence as well. The states still hold a lot. A lot of pro-Western outlook. I also banned all these political parties. Even doing that, it can still happen. Damn. Uh, that's annoying. Oh, well. But I guess, like, story-wise, the army took control. Took most of Korea and China and Vietnam, and the army struggled to sort of stabilize. Hopefully, the faction doesn't dissolve when other nations get kicked out and stuff. We need, we need to do another naval invasion here, by the way. Because the one didn't fucking work. Dude, Thailand is being incredibly resilient. But anyway, yeah. Um, they ousted the army. Democracy is back. Fuck. Dude, the amount of faction leaders we've had in the series is kinda bonkers. What have we had, like six, seven? I don't fucking know. Yeah, well... There's a couple ways we're going to have to do this. Ugh. I'm going to have to think about it. Anyway, we need to focus on this. Thai Inquisition, because now we're nearly in 2010. We are starting to raid some of the Thai... ...convoys, and it's ballooned to 200k losses. Holy shit, Germany wants to invest. The problem is... ...ever since WW2... The States has been investing in Japan being a pro-Western ally. So that's always going to be the case. And we're accepting all these civilian factories. So we might need to continue to get the nationalist propaganda going. And we've had no stability and negative political power. So overall, I'm sure the Japanese populace isn't too overly happy with how the army's been run and things. But we cleared national debt. <laughs> it's gone to zero, which is pretty fucking good. And they've capitulated. Finally, fuck me. Alright, so let's uh, give the majority of the north of the country to Thailand. Uh, to Vietnam of Thailand. I think, yeah. Like most of that Indochina region. Well, give fuck me. Thailand, South Korea were definitely really hard to conquer in this series. While Vietnam and China were easier. <laughs> Who would have thought? And I want this bottom half to myself, yeah, because I want to eventually take Malaysia and Indonesia, so there's no harm in having that. But Vietnam, look at that. And, yeah. Oh, God, there's more factions popping up here. Yeah, so it's like every region is sort of defending themselves. We've got the Afghan-British Alliance, and then, like, the Freedom League. Okay, interesting. Now we have to deal with this. Okay, so we've gone with Agrarian Reform. June now, 2010. And we're going to continue to try and get the nationalistic up. And we'll start uh, justifying against Malaysia eventually. That is the uh, next target. I can do a coup, but I don't think so. I think we're better off to try and do a vote and maybe a coalition. 
We'll see how we go. Because I can't afford for them to have a civil war and try and let the army overthrow the government again. I don't know. Um, no, we don't want to attack anyone. If anything, we want to attack emerging outlook, potentially. Because that can backfire and reduce the DPJ's influence. Yeah, and it did. So, the army's still very popular. Now that we're sort of out of the financial crisis, and we've stabilized a bit in 2010, hopefully there's not too many more RNG events or disasters to come. So let's invite the speaker. So 30% isn't enough for an outright majority, however... We might be able to form a coalition. Oh god. The army forming a coalition? What? The Ruskies have attacked Turkmenistan. <laughs> okay. I uh, didn't expect that. Oh, can we invite Turkmenistan? We can invite Russia. What in the fuck? Oh, they're back pro-Western. They've been back and forth on this. No way. We can invite them due to that war. Oh, it's because we're pro-Western now. You've got to be fucking joking. Oh my god, that's an absurd coup. If that stays. <laughs> oh my god. I wanted to try and take their Siberian territory. But the Japanese have an alliance. The Japanese Russo alliance. Oh my god. <laughs> the Chinese encirclement network. Oh wow. Uh, that's huge. Oh wow. Um, this campaign has been wild, to say the least. They were sort of on the hit list, along with NATO and the UK and stuff in the US. Because ah, I kind of wanted to take their territory. Well, dude, accepting that faction from Taiwan, like, that was awesome. That was such a fucking string of luck. Holy shit. Having a faction that early on has basically changed this campaign. Okay, so the, um, we gave up and let the army try to <laughs> form a coalition. Uh, I guess we invite, oh, they've got like no percentile. But like we invite the monarchists, like what have, what, what have we got? Because we still need 20%. Because we can't really boost anyone else. I guess we go by moderates, and then we go by... Uh, maybe more emergent looking? I don't fucking know. Like the populists, I guess we invite. So who's who? Yeah, so... The youth party. Look, if we have to rule in coalition, so be it. Dude, the army has to make a compromise and can't rule out as a... Straight up. Uh, essentially, just like the military government. We have to ru rule in coalition. So, we're going to have to add some checks and balances. Dude, this campaign's been amazing. I'm really, really enjoying it. I hope you guys are as well. It has not been smooth sailing. Uh, whatsoever. Okay, so we need a little bit more. So, maybe... Your party? Is that going to be enough? Because we've got 40%. So that's five. We might need another one after that. So let's bring in them. Welcome aboard. And we still need five more percent. So we've had to give a little bit of power. The Ruskies want to give us access to their satellites. That's kind of cool. Yeah, so I guess we bring them in. Nice! So we've properly formed a government. Hopefully this has stabilized Japan now. My god, what a crazy turn of events as we push into 2010. Dude, I thought we would have most of Southeast Asia under our control by at least like 2010. We're still very much away from it, but any other wars we want to go on in, the uh, Ruskies can uh, help us out. Alrighty. We have enough political power now to finally justify against Malaysia. And we're going to be able to do the same against Algeria as well. Nice. And, oh no, we just don't have enough. That's a little bit annoying. We're going to have to wait a little bit. 
But we're finally going to be able to be back bringing more nations under our control. Yeah, I can't believe they left CSTO. Well, now we're back nationalist. Oh, God. I wonder if the um, Ruskies will stay. I don't know. Anyway, the Admiral and the... Um, uh, the former commander, or whatever his name was, has left. We've got this new uh, leader again. Is that number eight? I don't know. The amount of uh, figureheads we push through. God damn. Oh no, the earthquake under Mount Fuji. Holy shit. There's been an earthquake here. Oh no, we've got the Fukushima nuclear power plant disaster. Oh, holy shit. Just as I thought things were fucking stabilizing. Another curveball has hit us. A huge earthquake has hit at Japan. Oh my god. Is that going to delay these justifications? I hope not. Okay, let's secure that. Oh my god. Things have gone to shit as well. A massive aftershock. Has hit Sendai and my political power has gone down again. <laughs> oh fuck, I thought we were out of it. And now we're in a bloody depression. Economically. Oh god. 133 billion. In this new coalition as well. Oh, you have got to be shitting me. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> I thought we were out of the woods. Oh god. Would you believe it? Well, unfortunately on that note, guys, thank you very much for watching episode 6 of the Japan series. My god, plenty more episodes to come, plenty more conquering needed, but we have been absolutely brutalized <laughs> through the last couple of years. Hopefully, Japan will, in, will, in, uh, will withstand, and hopefully we don't have any civil wars or anything in the future. That would be really quite unfortunate but yeah we are struggling now in the 2010s we're going to continue with our invasion of malaysia and then eventually indonesia so if you like the sound of that feel free to leave the video like and subscribe if you're new oh nice we've unlocked a new part of the japanese focus tree being able to prepare and uh, repair fukushima after the nuclear disaster hmm, interesting Okay, so we haven't had the best time government-wise. <laughs> We're still trying to stabilize after having the economy shattered and the political sphere of influence. Ah, American assistance. The Americans want to help our military. Oh, nice. Dude, if we could get some of their equipment and logistics, that would massively help as we continue into Southeast Asia. We're still continuing on our series objective of taking the imperial territory that was held at the height of the Japanese Empire in WW2. So we want to try and get Indonesia fully uh, under our control. All right, let's uh, continue to sort of clean up the site. I still think we should be pro-nuclear power rather than against. I think that would be best for us. Our political party is still very much down. Oh, we're in a economic depression. We're well past a recession. We're losing 90 billion now. Dude, this debt is terrible. So here are the factions, which is kind of interesting. We've got the Freedom League. We've got NATO. We've got the Kelmar Union uh, in the north. So they're going to amend the constitution. That's fine. And then, like, the UK is in its own alliance. But most of the European states have, like, changed their flags as well. It looks really quite weird. Kind of cool. All European centric. Look at this. <laughs> Super interesting. However, it's interesting that uh, Scandinavia and the Nordic countries have all banded together. Maybe we should go against them. Because we do have the Ruskies on our side. It looks like Italy is firmly divided. Yeah, so we might actually be able to bring the Nordic countries under our control rather than NATO or something. We've got the Jerusalem Pact here with Egypt. Okay. And then obviously we've got our African territories. I would like to take Algeria as well. That's definitely on the books at one point. Can to grow our African holdings. 
Okay, so now we're in a recession, so that's a little bit better, but not by much. Our economy's in the poo. Nice, we're finally making political power now. October 2012. Oh, and thankfully Indonesia's going to guarantee them. Oh, that's perfect. That saves me doing another justification. It does make things a little bit harder. Um, I'm just going to move these units that were on the Pakistani border. It did look like that Malaysia was going to call them in, but I guess they revoked their guarantee. So we'll start off with Malaysia first, and I guess on the island of Borneo, we are just going to be able to continue our advance, I suppose. We have two over, well over 200 factories under our control. And it looks like Taiwan and the Ruskies have got naval supremacy, uh, naval units in and around us. We'll move the navy as well, so we can get these naval invasions off. We'll try bringing all of Borneo under our control, and then after we subdue Malaysia, we are going to need to amphibiously attack the rest of the islands, which can be a little bit tricky. I definitely found in the Australian series, it was tough going from south to north. I wonder if it's easy if you have more of Indochina under your control, perhaps. Like, it might be easier going, invading Indonesia from north to south, rather than the other way around. But, it's not really a comparison, the Australian invasion of Indonesia to our Jap Japanese one, as we have a lot more allies, particularly the Philippines and China helping us out. We'll have a... A larger navy and air supremacy as well. Nice. So, we've landed. So, it does look like they've just called them in instantly. Nice. So, let's try and get all of Borneo under our control. We've landed in the north here as well. Let's get the future Indonesian capital province under our control. Oh, just a shame our air wings can't reach. And unfortunately, the air base is down here in Vietnam. Just aren't large enough. But the war in Southeast Asia is still very much underway. Okay, so it looks like Mexico, a lot of factions are sending help. Along with the uh, Ruskies under Alexei Navalny, which is kind of w interesting. Looks weird with a beard. But they are a part of our faction now. Okay, uh, focus tree wise. It's interesting that we had to wait till 2012 before we could even access that part of the focus tree. So far, most of their infantry seems to be holding on the mainland of their capital in Kuala Lumpur, but it's about to fall. Borneo is about to fall as well, and Malaysia has capitulated perfect. Now, I could puppet them, but I think I want to take this under my control. Yeah, I think we paint it. That nice sort of pink and ready Japanese color. I think we do that. Right, so now we need to go against mm, Indonesia itself. So it shouldn't be too hard to do a naval invasion across the strait here. Like, you would probably nearly swim that. I wouldn't fucking swim it because it'd be filled with sharks and shit. And God knows what. So Malaysia has capitulated, now hopefully Indonesia will as well. They are trying to get some control back on Borneo, but not enough. Okay, are those units have got there? Nice. So make sure you take a port so we can ferry more troops over if need be. But our troops are incredibly battle-hardened. Battle we still have plenty of fuel as well. And we're doing really quite well. But let me know in the comments, guys, feedback and suggestions. If you're still enjoying the Japanese series, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Would really appreciate it. But let me know other countries you would like me to play as. There's a bunch that have been recommended to me. A lot of people want to see me play Norway for some fucking reason. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it's got Norwegian subscribers. Taiwan's up there as well. And a bunch of others. Alright. 
Yeah, it seems like the Ruskies are really helping us out here for whatever reason. It's been a naval engagement as well. Let's up our fuel capacity. Liberia, our African allies, look like they might come out and help. 276 whopping factories. Fuck yeah. And we'll wait for these naval invasions to be complete. Yeah, Kajikistan and Turkmenistan. Why the fuck are we at war with them? That's so weird. Maybe the uh, Ruskies will go after them in Central Asia. I don't know. Oh, hang on. Okay, so that was capitulated. Well, I guess we give them to the Uyghurs in uh, East Tajikis Tajikistan. Yeah, like, I guess we just give that to them. Fuck it. We'll grow our puppet, whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't wait until they send me some volunteers to help on out. Still waiting for these, um... Naval invasions to get ready. Actually, we should probably push to... West Papua. And, uh, a couple others as well. Just need to wait for these naval invasions to be complete. Alright, we're at 50% of our fuel capacity. Or left. Dude, we are so in debt. <laughs> oh my god, it's absolutely, it's actually absurd. I guess we dropped the welfare because that's what's costing us heaps. Fucking crazy. Alright, some of the naval evasions are kicking off now. Oh, fuck. We're meeting resistance in some of these areas. We've managed to take... Borneo successfully. Oh no, so we did have a fight there, but... Looks like we're going to be able to land still. Nice, so just try and make your way all the way down here. Because there, even though there's a bunch of islands connecting, there's land bridges that we can get to. Nice. Let's continue to upgrade that area. Dude, we've nearly completed the land doctrine tree, which is kind of insane. Because what is it now? March 2013? 13 years. We've played a lot of years in this series. Mostly because how tough this series can be from time to time. Like the RNG for Japan, the economic crises and other stuff is kind of crazy. Okay, so we're going to try and finish them off in the north. Um, we'll wait for these reinforcements to get here. And if we've still got the port under our control, we're not going to need to navally invade more so. Okay, that'll do. Alright, we're being delayed there slightly. Although we got the landing, we have made a bit of resistance. They've gone to 80k. We still have air and naval supremacy over Indonesia. But fierce fighting is still breaking on out. And we're out of fuel. So that's something we will need to... Address. Alright, a little bit of a push here going on. <laughs> There's three... Fucking tank divisions that they've sent. Thanks, Alexi. <laughs> Appreciate it. Alright, um... Yeah, I think we just need more forces on the main island. Just to help this push. Oh god, I guess we get all this fuel from Iraq. I don't fucking know. 120 barrels of it. There we go. We want to get to a point where we have current... Oh, why is that stopped? We need more. Nigeria... We just don't have the trade influence. Looks like the states and a couple of other countries are exporting at their fuel capacity. Oh, nice. We've surrounded a bunch of them in there. Oh, we've landed in West uh, Papua, which is pretty strong. 
Nice. We're still struggling to get into that island. Oops, I misclicked. Oh, right. Um, that hasn't finished yet. But it will soon. It is tying up like 60 divisions, which is kind of annoying. I could send them to hell, but I think we're okay. I think we're going to win here because we're about to crush like seven fucking divisions there. Indonesia's nearly capitulated. Dude, what was this play by them? Dude, that's crazy. It's fucking wild. <laughs> we just had like three massive encirclements. We've landed in West Papua. Let's get this port under our control and be good. Mustn't be too much longer now. We've had a couple of, a couple of string of some phenomenal European victories. <laughs> the Russians have landed in Jakarta. Like what? <laughs> They've sent some tanks down there. Getting more logistics as well. Uh, yeah, occupied territories are pretty hard to hold in this series. Especially with negative political power and political instability. Cyprus wants to leave the EU. There's a couple island territories there. That are about to fall. Come on. Alright, that's fully under our control. Nice! We've won here on this island, and we'll try and push for their new established capital of Jakarta now, I suppose. I hope that's enough to capitulate them. There's just... So many victory points spread out between these islands. We're still struggling to go here. We might need a navally invade somewhere else. They've lost well over 200k. Yeah, so we can promote green energy or we can go down the nuclear stuff. No, I still want to restart the nuclear power plant because it's still crazy efficient energy. We should definitely be pro-nuclear. Nuclear. Just need to mitigate the natural disasters. Wasn't there that whole thing that they didn't put up the seawall? And that was one of the major contributing factors. For Fukushima when the thing hit. Because they didn't want to scare the people in the fucking town. Like, if they did that, they would have mitigated heaps of fucking damage when the tsunami hit. Didn't only one person die from the direct explosion as well? Like, only one? Some maintenance guy? Anyway. Obviously, a lot of people got affected by it, but, like, actually from the blast itself. Some, some crazy stuff like that? Anyway, uh, we're going to take all of Indonesia fully under our control. Nice. We couldn't get in that island that looks like a K. Because fuck you, get out of our island. <laughs> but now, most of Southeast Asia is under our control. Nice. And we make plans and preparations to bring Australia under Imperial Japan, Japan rule. And we'll wait for this Algerian justification to be complete as well. Nice. Okay, so I've tried to move the army to the islands as close as we can in Australia. And then we'll amphibiously attack the Aussies. We'll try and surround each state. Um, Turkmenistan is still, we're still at war with for whatever fucking reason. But it looks like they're going after them, which is kind of cool. They're launching a... Naval invasion over the Caspian Sea? I think it's the Caspian Sea. I could be wrong. Anyway, let's launch an invi naval invasion into Perth. From Indonesia. Let's send one here from like Timor. Uh, no, we want to go actually into Darwin. The port of Darwin. Nice and deep for naval vessels. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Alright, let's uh, 
go to Cairns. Watch out for the Crocs. And we'll guess we go from here as well. If I can land in um, Breezy. And I guess we'll go get you to Sydney. Crikey, there's Japanese landing in Botany Bay. <laughs> Actual. All right, let's uh, move the navy around, and we'll get this going. Okay, the invasion of Algeria is complete, and let's bring this under our control, and we can further extend the United States of Liberia's. country borders. We're literally fighting in the middle of nowhere in the desert. I wouldn't imagine Algeria is going to make hardly any resistance. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Just need to keep an eye on this. Got to watch out if the French get involved. Yeah, if Algeria got attacked, I reckon the French... Like, do the French guarantee Algeria's independence? Like, there's a lot of... Um, French people that are either half Algerian and stuff back and forth. Obviously being a former colony. There's a lot of cultural ties. I reckon they would. There's a lot of Algerian footballers, or French, French footballers that have sort of ties to Algeria. They're so damn close. They're putting up a little bit of resistance, but now our African country in Africa now has territory in the Mediterranean and in North Africa, which is kind of insane. Alright, what can we go down now? Oh yeah, we need to put in the uh, new nuclear strategy. Germany's recorded Article 50. I thought they were more banded together. NATO and you, well maybe not. Just seems they changed their flags. Maybe they're more divided than ever. Than ever, I don't fucking know. Anyway, we'll wrap up this Algerian war and then I think we've got to wrap up the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. Episode 7 of the Hearts of Iron 4 Millennium Dawn Japanese series, October 2013. Stay tuned for episode 8 coming out the exact same time tomorrow, where we're going to have the invasion of Australia. We might sort of find someone else to go to war with as well. We'll get Liberia to have a huge chunk of West Africa now, which is incredibly exciting. Declaring war upon my home hunt country of Australia. And also, we might make some plans and preparations to go after the Kelmar Union which have left NATO and made their own faction with the Nordic countries. So, it might be a good idea to go to war with them, as we've got our allies right there on the border. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. It's 2013, October. We've somehow stabilised the government after countless fucking typhoons and earthquakes and natural disasters. We're 800 trillion in debt. <laughs> We have over 300 military factories, though, but at least we're making positive political power. So let's draw a offensive line here in Finland. We might even give Finland to our risky allies. We'll sort of puppet the rest of the Kalmar Union. With um, most of the world going into their own factions, which is interesting. NATO is still a thing, but it's mostly only Europe. The UK left has made their own faction with the Afghans, and the states have made an alliance with Canada. And... The Scandinavian plus Nordic countries have sort of made their own pact as well. Uh, I guess we'll forgive him, whatever. But we've had a couple times where we've flipped in this series back to pro-Western rather than the JSDF, the Japanese Self-Defense Force. So, oh, they're actually going to land here. Alright, whatever's the quickest way to get there. I just thought that was quicker, going to the north, but maybe not. Anyway, we've got plans and preparations to go against Australia. Finally bringing those pesky Aussies under Japanese control. 
Yes. We're going to have Japanese soldiers landing in Bondi Beach. <laughs> All right. And then we want to go into the uh, Baltic states as well. Because they're probably going to get called on in. All right. Let's draw these front lines. And... Make plans and preparations to go. There's no point in moving them to Southeast Asia. We might as well chuck them on the border here. Because we're probably going to use them in this theatre quicker than before. We also brought in Algeria into our faction as well, which is kind of cool. Alright, we're finally making some money now, which is good. Come on, we probably should get some of this debt down, jeez. Anyway, let's conquer Finland. Still 300 days, a year or so before the uh, justification is complete. So we go after the Kelmar Union. We're now in a recession now, which is not too bad. Alrighty, let's uh, set up the navy around the Tasman Coral and Timor Sea. The Great Australian Bite. Okay. Now... That's complete. Let's go, go, go. Now, we should be able to land with minimal resistance, you'd think. The only problem is if the Americans come on in. Because they would be guaranteeing the independence of Australia. However, they're essentially at war with a united Asia, so they might not bother. So we've landed in Perth and in Darwin. If we can land in the majority of the states, that'll be good. We land in far north Queensland, get that division to eventually head to Adelaide. And we'll go through here. There is a train line that goes from Darwin to South Australia, so we should be able to jump on that and fucking fly. We are meeting some resistance, mostly in Darwin and in southern Queensland. There seems to be a couple in Western Australia, but... We've just got so many divisions, we're going to gobble up the country so quickly. Most of the victory points are on the coasts. So we need to focus on them, rather than the, the fucking desert where there's nothing. They're already on the back foot. Queensland has fallen. Half of WA. Most of the Northern Territory. And it's only a matter of time before they capitulate and fall. We might not need to take my home state of Tasmania. Be annoying if we have to naval invade that, but it should capitulate, yep. <laughs> there we go. Australia has fallen. Nice. Oh my god. Heaps of equipment, which is sick. So, we'll take all the political power and we'll just fully occupy the country. Bring it directly under our control. Nice. So, there might be a little bit of territory here and there that we don't control directly, but that looks pretty good. That looks very similar to what was controlled under the height of uh, Imperial Japan. And then, I guess we'll try and go after some of these other factions now. Um, anything else we can go down here? Maybe continue with uh, nationalist propaganda. Up the military infrastructure. Dude, our military factories are off the charts. We can start asteroid mining. Maybe we should do that. It's finally popped up. Cool. Getting some better quality Mitsubishi tanks. We're still technically at war, which is annoying. We've got some other strategies that we can employ. We're already in debt, so fuck it, why not spend a little bit more? What the hell? Turkey, the UAE, Kuwait, and Bahrain are at war. Alright, there's a crazy Middle East war going on here now. It's because world tension is 100%. Just 
2014, Italy has declared war upon Italy. Or no. <laughs> We've managed to get an improved Japanese rifle, which is pretty good. Turkey's involved, that's kind of whack. But yeah, we're just still waiting for that um, war justification against Finland, and then we'll kick off the second Russo Finnish war. Oh no, we've had another eruption in Mount Onatuk. Onatuki? I don't fucking know. I'd imagine it's something like that. Control cyberbullying, what? We've got 60 divisions here in Perth. Um. Let's just try and get them over here. It's going to take so long to get to Scandinavia, but we don't really need them in Southeast Asia anymore. There's not really any other countries we can go after. We've sort of completed our ambitions down here, but now that we've got most of Asia, a little bit of Africa, and the Ruskies with us, we probably should go after some of these factions. So let's go after... The Nordic countries here. I think it'll be fun. Be a good test. We're continuing to bring more asteroids into orbit and selling them as well, mining them, which will give us a nice little bit of money. It should help out our fucking economic woes. Japan's so poor that we're fucking needing to mine asteroids. <laughs> December now, 2014. The war should be soon. Done. Oh, no. Our election's coming. We might flip back again. That would be annoying as. Oh, and we did because we're at 20%. Oh, my God. It is so hard to keep nationalism in Japan in Millennium Dawn. This is the second time this has happened. That's not going to cancel it, I don't think, because we've still got it. It's just because we... I guess we could stop, but we continue to except um, construction from a lot of the other factions. Because I think just the RNG of this series, uh, a lot of factions are pro-Western, which is whatever. Oh, God. I guess we'll try and flip back again. It shouldn't delay this war, though, I hope. That would be annoying. But let me know. Would you like me to go after some of the other factions? The States, the UK, NATO, potentially. Let me know in the comments. Alright, we've got some volunteers coming. Mostly Vietnam. But for some reason, um, a bunch of these units fucking deployed, which is kind of insane. We must have done something. Because now we have... Like, I didn't recruit these. Like, what? And I don't recognize the division template as well. We have 115... <laughs> fucking units. Insane. I guess we'll send them to Scandinavia. We've got nearly over 200 divisions. Uh, divisions. Probably nearly a thousand battalions or something. Crazy, mate. January now, 2015. 15 years in this series. Let's uh, try and go after Scandinavia. Okay, let's uh, declare war. Looks like Finland's going to come in. I'm hoping all of the Union does. So as we're right on the border here, the quicker they come in, the better. Uh, we probably should move our Air Force up here as well. They're going to be running some of their MiG jets, but we should have done this earlier. There's a lot of allied craft down there, like naval. And some aircraft, which is kind of cool. Well, let's move everyone up. And we'll kick things off in Finland. Alright, we've given out the attack order. But we just need our allies to be called on in. The Danes have set a bunch of divisions up. Same with the Norwegians. Come on, come on, let's go. Oh my god, there's Americans coming out to help us? <laughs> what the fuck? I guess because we're pro-Western, eh? Now, at this time. Which is kind of crazy. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. <laughs> Japanese. Americans. Brits and Russians all fighting together. It's kind of crazy. Oh, is India going to come on in, are they? Oh, fuck. Hang on. Turkey. Oh, no. Yeah, India is going to be involved. What the fuck? Oh, that's annoying. Because India is such a large country there on my border. Shit. We can, for some reason, invite the Saudis. Fuck it. bit weird, but whatever. Let's get more <laughs> countries in into the China encirclement network, whatever the fuck. Come on, we need our fighter jets running proper drills. Into the danger zone. It was a fun movie. I don't know if I'd recommend it, it was just fun. It's a popcorn movie. The new Top Gun. What do you guys think of it? Tom Cruise. Fucking mental. Fantastic actor though. Alright, so we're starting to make some... Progression and inroads. Into Finland. Nice. The Scandinavian Nordic boys seem to be giving us a little bit of resistance. Fucking Greece wants to send us some divisions. I haven't decided exactly what I want to do for this territory. I think we give all of Finland to the Ruskies. I think that's what we do there. Being a former Soviet territory and uh, Soviet state like USSR. But then I think I think we need to puppet one of the Nordic countries over the rest. Who owned them all at one point? Sweden did. I think Denmark and Norway had a coalition. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Nordic lads in the comments. If Sweden, Denmark... Norway had to be ruled by one country who would rule <laughs> let me know in the comments I think probably Sweden because they'd have the bigger military maybe but I think Denmark would be the sensible choice <laughs> that's not going to piss anyone off <laughs> oh fuck me alright we're starting to make some progression here we've managed to nearly cut Finland in half but it's kind of wild to fucking see Japanese military forces operating here in the snow. And uh, maybe they're actually a bit more well adapted than some other nations. You forget how much it snows in Japan. Particularly in like the fucking Sapporo region. Like a lot of Australians go to Japan for like skiing exclusively. The snowfall, particularly the north, is kind of fucking mad. Oh, dude, we're just stretching them. We're about to take Turku. And fucking Iranians have landed in Finland. Hilarious. Unfortunately, we lost a bunch of convoys there. I guess we're... importing fuel from St. Petersburg. Finland's about to capitulate. And then we need to push into Lapland. They have now officially capitulated. Capitulated and the Turks are coming on here to help as well. Oh, nice little naval invasion there. But thankfully, we're going to be able to bring the Nordic countries in Scandinavia fully under our control without even annoying the UK. America or NATO. Which is kind of mad.
Okay. So some of our units and allies are fighting on the Indian border. Okay, so we're going to have to deal with them. I think we're probably going to have to defeat them to actually finish off this war. Oh, dude, as if India got called on in. Uh, to be fair, it was probably on the list that we should have taken, to be honest. It was probably the last major player in uh, Asia itself, to be fair. Finland has capitulated. We're fighting in Lapland now. In joint Norway and Swedish territory. Up in the cold Arctic. Alright, more countries coming on in. Just trading at the moment. Dude, supply and progression have really slowed down here. Oh, Canada left the Freedom League. Dude, they've got like no one on their side. <laughs> their influence has uh, really fallen. Uh, looks like China's coming down to help us here as well. Unfortunately, some more naval invasions there. Yeah. Oh, dude, I hate when, like, major powers get called on in. Oh, shit, what's this? <laughs> There's Ruskies in Denmark. They've landed in Aarhus. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, they're pushing into uh, Malmo as well. They've pushed over the strait. Hell yeah. Well, if they can take the south while we distract most of the armies in the north, I don't really care if we lose more in the north, whatever. So be it. Dude, our manpower has gone massively down. Not because we've only lost a little bit. Only 40k. Oh shit, Denmark capitulated. It's mostly due to those crazy amount of divisions. So it looks like the Japanese forces are really distracting. As most of southern Sweden is now falling as well. Don't really know what else to do on the tech tree. We finished and cleaned up the Fukushima uh, nuclear disaster. But anyway, unfortunately, I've got to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Episode 8 of the Hearts of Iron 4 Millennium Dawn Modern Day Mod Campaign as Japan on the Japan mod. Highly recommend it. If you haven't played already, you can find it quite easy uh, on the Steam Workshop. Kicking things off in May 2015. <laughs> Crikey, 15 years we've played in this series. Here today, we're going to be wrapping up our war against the Kalmar Union. And the war against the Nordic and Scandinavian countries. And also the battle for the Raj. The battle over Indonesia. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video like and subscribe if you're new. It's really much appreciated. And we've still got to get uh, Turkmenistan under our control uh, as well. Oh, great. A brand new Japanese bullet train has been complete. So, most of our Japanese forces are fighting in the north. While our allies are continuing to help in the south. Uh, tech tree wise, we're sort of booming. <laughs> like, we're pretty set now. We've got so much factories and stuff, it's kind of insane. The Swedes are putting a little bit of resistance here. Denmark and Finland has capitulated. Norway and Sweden are... yet to fall. We've got some more reinforcements in the Baltic. Visby has fallen as well, so we'll bring over these guys to help them in this southern push. There seems to be more supply and logistics here. I just think up in the north it's so harsh in Lapland and stuff. Oh no, unfortunately we've got some Japanese Fighter jets. Falling. Oh, alright, so we're pushing into Uppsala. Yeah, so we're kind of just distracting most of their northern forces while the southern part of their country is capitulating. I've taken the right and left pocket. So it's basically India. It hasn't fallen. Uh, we're contesting over the Himalayas. 
It's probably not a bad idea now, actually, to move. the air force back down here to the Himalayas and Western China and get them operating down here because we're going to need it. I mean, I'm also focusing on the Nordic countries rather than India just yet. We are winning in some pockets, but overall not. Oh, they're about to capitulate, you'd think. They mustn't hold for much longer now. And maybe just try and carve and climb over those last two. And once we're finished with this war, Jesus, the peace conference is going to be crazy. We're going to deal with the other countries if that's something you guys would like to see or maybe we should start a brand new series playing as someone else yeah we are winning here and there so for whatever reason Turkmenistan it's kind of weird oh Sweden has fallen nice and you'd imagine Norway will fall loose suit under a matter of days Alright, we can't amend any referendum stuff down here. We've struggled to hold 51%, so we can't even go down that fucking path of the tech tree. Like, the main thing to take from this Japanese series, if you do play it on the Millennium Dawn and the Japanese sub mod, it's very hard to keep a stable government in charge, particularly if it's a non Western outlook. And the economic situation, Jesus, isn't the best. Oh, how have they not done? We've nearly got them all under control. Oh, no, they capitulated. Nice. Oh, so we can't actually decide. Okay, we can go from um, stagnation to some growth. All right. We'll just try and finish off the last of the units up here in Lapland. Was it Sampi? I don't even know what this says. I don't even know this fucking region. We're making heaps of money now. That should reduce our debt. Still about four trillion. It ballooned to seven trillion at one point, <clears throat> but now we're making like a hundred billion. Ever so often, so we should be able to reduce that. But it looks like our allies have got all of... Uh, Scandinavia mostly under their control. Hopefully we can change that slightly. Yeah, I think I give it to one nation. I haven't decided just yet. Alright, let's try and finish up here. Alright, focusing on the India front now. Purely. Essentially, the war in Scandinavia is complete. Now we can focus all my attention, my air force and my navy down to India and bring it under the fold. I could even just take it under my direct control. Okay, so we might need to do some naval invasions as well. My fuel is very, very low. Will Canada allow us to go into a surplus fuel-wise? Seems to be. Kind of weird that the Kelmar Union, we can't deal with their territory because the bloody Indians came on in. But whatever, so be it. Oh, we've actually taken Delhi there, nice. Now that my attention is fully focusing on India, 
We should be able to get more territorial gains. Yeah, I guess getting control of the cabinet a bit better. Oh, nice. Some of that um, asteroid mining has come back. <laughs> it's kind of cool in this mod that you can pull asteroids into orbit to mine them. Because that's where the future is. There's only a certain amount of resources on Earth. Asteroid mining is probably the next best thing. Alright, let's uh, move these around. And then we're going to have to get some units to navally invade. Dude, we've only got 400 military factories. Insane. Okay. So I've moved the available armies that we're mostly fighting in Scandinavia down to Indochina. They're currently in the port of Thailand. And the naval invasions are ready. So let's invade southern India to open up a couple fronts. The navy's here. Because we are struggling in the northern and eastern region. It's just like that Tibetan plateau is like a fucking nightmare to fight in. Mostly due to logistics and supplies. Okay, we've managed to get a nice beachhead here. And then just head north. Just rapidly try and gain as much territory as you can. Like fucking go, 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 go. Alright, we found some instant resistance. Oh, nice. That's huge. We've managed to take an airfield incredibly quickly. It's an interesting, like, half of India's airfields are actually in the south. For some reason these naval invasions aren't going off, so we might just need to bring them in manually on those. Like, try and divide the country in half. Grab the airfields. And we're actually struggling there. We seem to be winning in that one. We might be able to get a second footholding, but we'll see how we go. Let's just try and draw some of these front lines a bit better. Come on. There we go. Dude, we've got so many units there. They can get involved. Alright, maybe go for the west of the country even. Fuck it. Can we land in Calcutta? We sure can. And you move this way. Okay. Fierce fighting is happening in the... Southern portion of the Indian subcontinent. We seem to be trading more than anything back and forth. The push in the north has... Stagnated somewhat. Oh, we've been cut off here, but we should be able to regain it quite quickly. And we have. Nice. Things are looking good for Japan. Come on. Mustn't be too much longer yet. Before India is subdued. in my air force oh they retook Delhi but it shouldn't matter because our southern push has been successful You got to give it to the Indians. 
They've been resistant to the end. Nice! They've capitulated, finally. Fuck yeah, an oath. Hey! Turkmenistan has capitulated. Oh, finally. The Treaty of Torreshavn. Oh my god. Denmark, Finland, Latvia, Norway, Turkmenistan, Sweden, Tur Turkey, India. We have to deal with. Fuck an oath. Um. <laughs> Alright. So. I guess we just occupy India. Like it nearly connects. <laughs> if you include our puppets. Fuck it. We'll just bring it under our direct control. <laughs> um. Turkey? I guess we puppet. Like, why not? I don't think I would own that. It looked kind of weird. So I guess we just puppet them. I would have given it to the Ruskies, but they don't really border them that well. Um, I guess we'll puppet Turkmenistan. And... We should puppet one of these countries. And then take the rest. I think we'll give Finland to the Russians, all of it. I would give them a little bit of the north there, but it would actually give, me, give them more of Norway than what I would want. So they can have that. as like a former Soviet state. Actually, I'll give them Latvia as well. And I'm going to puppet Denmark. <laughs> I'll puppet Denmark. And then I'll make them the leaders of the Kelmar Union, <laughs> I think. So we'll puppet Denmark. And, yeah, we'll give them all this territory. Give them Sweden. Give them Norway. And a couple of the Finnish islands there, just off the coast. Nice. December 2015. Britain wants to send volunteers, but that's it. Oh my god. We've got Scandinavia, Africa... Turkey, pretty much all of Asia under our control. The DPJ is still currently in charge. Well, unfortunately on that note, guys, got to wrap up today's video here. Thank you very much for watching episode 9 and look, you know what? I might put a pin in the campaign here. We've done incredibly well. Um, I wouldn't mind doing episode 10 if that's something you guys would like to see. Or we should sort of move on to something else. We've been steamrolling now. We've well and truly made Japan a global superpower. However, going after NATO, Britain and the US might be fun. Let me know in the comments. But um, kind of crazy how that alliance early on with Taiwan, that faction basically created all this to become and make Japan the global superpower with just under 500 factories. Kind of insane. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this series. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Stay tuned for more Hearts of Iron 4 content on the channel. Let me know other Millennium Dawn series and other mods you'd like me to potentially play. We could play some Kaiser Reich, Road 56. There's a bunch. Fallout, potentially. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for more content on the channel. There's always going to be something to do with Hearts of Iron 4, of course. My name has been Simpsy. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.